minutes from January 9th, 2019. Motion to approve. Seconded. Looks like we're good. Okay. Comments from the public not listed on the agenda. Dan? All set. Keith? No? Okay. Appointment, Sue Monahan, Western Massachusetts Mother's Day Half Marathon. So Sue also emailed earlier today and said she'd be about 20 minutes late. Oh, she's coming in? Yeah. So this is more than an appointment. Oh, we're not talking appointment as in to a committee. We're talking appointments as in a scheduled, right, scheduled time. time. Oh, okay. We should change up the schedule. All right. And Julie Bochman and Chris Clark. Wait, wait, wait. Yep. First refusal and return. So I'll, I'll give you the... Oh, Joyce, you're oh, sorry, you think? Sorry, we would have waited if we had known which is a minute. Oh, I, yeah, that's why I know I might be late, but I didn't know. It was late by email, and then my phone was dead. Uh, okay. Unless the battery was on. Yeah. All right. Um, called. Is Julie and Chris going to be here? So they're not going to be here. Uh, this is in relation to the, the Hukoski Solar Array that's off Christian Lane behind the Blue School. Uh, Next Amp originally planned to lease that parcel um, from the owner, but uh, plans have changed and they're, they're going to purchase the parcel from the owners. And before they do that, um, they need to do, well, they want to clear up two things. One is they need to, the land's currently in Chapter 61A, so it needs to come out. And that's what, that's what. Uh, this is to the, to the what of the solar array? Southwest. No, no, it's, no, it's the land that the solar is on. The land that would go on. Oh, I'm sorry. Blue school. By the blue school. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. West of the blue school. West of Jane Gripko's house. West of Jane. Okay. Yep. As you're going up the hill on the right. Okay. Yep. There's a map in here somewhere. Yeah. Probably from. Oh, example. okay. I got it. Um. So it needs to come out of chapter one, chapter 61A, because it's a conversion to a non, uh, non qualifying use. And there's another issue that kind of simmering, and that's the question of whether. Um, parcel needs frontage before it can be constructed. The building inspector seems to believe that it does. The Zoning Board of Appeals believes that it doesn't. Um, so town council has been asked to provide an opinion as to um, whether frontage should be required for that or not. Um, frontage for the solar farm. Yeah. But that shouldn't be an issue for selling it, don't you? Uh, well, it's an issue if whether Nexamp wants to buy it. Because if they can't buy it, they don't want it because they can't. Put up their facility. And they can't do what they want to do just with the leases they had originally intended? Um, the lease is. The, the lease would not require frontage. The lease, um, the lease is a little bit separate. Uh, I think they would still continue to lease, but there's some. Um, I think there's some change conditions that made it more preferable for them to uh, purchase the land. Um, either way, lease or, or ownership. If, if they're not given a permit to put up the facility uh, because of zoning, they're not going to want to own property that they can't do anything with okay. or do what they, they want to do. Okay, so this is tape. Long story short, uh, they'll be back in touch um, either the next meeting or the right. meeting after. Okay. And when, when Sue comes in, we will um, move back to 3A. Okay. okay. And, and in, in any event, the, the thing we would have to decide regarding the property is a way of our right of first refusal. That, and that's the decision that would come to us if this moves forward. Correct, yeah. What, what I'd be interested in as part of this, and, and it's just for point of interest because more and more people are talking about this. When this array goes up, assuming it would, were to go up, of the currently Of the land that is currently being farmed in Waveland, what percentage of that acreage is now solar? I understand it's a very small amount, yeah. but I think it's an important piece of data that, that we get out there. Mm. What do you do? That map shows acreage, doesn't it? Acres? We didn't okay, but that map map doesn't do the math for me. No. We probably have to ask. The question would be what viable farming land. That's what I meant. Well, viable or current. I'm, I'm assuming that most of the current land is the viable land. Now, there may be some that's not, not being farmed that's viable. 
but like, that like the Sanderson piece, that was just sand. Right. So that's should be the piece behind the behind the town garage is too wet. They farmed it, they tried, they farmed. but it's not I mean, good similar work. to the land that's next to the highway that yeah. they okay. try every year and it, some years it's okay and some yeah. years yeah. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, that's, that's, that's all right, so viable, yeah. that's fair. So viable farming land. I'd be, and again, yeah. but that's subjective. It's yeah. gonna have uh, human opinion. Yeah. So, so I, I would just be curious, total end, and then we could do a viable, because people are asking, and I, and I think that we need to have that data so that we can refute the people who say all of our all, all of our cultural land is, is going to mm -hmm. going to, to clean energy, which it's not, but we need that data. Rather than one yeah. of us just saying, well. Yeah. And you can always give two numbers. You can say, this is our acreage of farmland, this is our acreage of, uh, of solar panels, which is still gonna be a really low, low um, uh, fraction. Uh, and then you can say, among those solar panels, how much were on what the farmer who owns it considers to be viable. Right. Um, and that number might be a little more subject, but that, that acreage of solar panels compared to acreage of farmland is gonna be so small, I think, that's a really important thing about I, I think it's a and, and and maybe to, to Joyce, you know, Joyce is absolutely right. Maybe we actually have the Ag Commission do a little bit of that digging. I don't know. Yeah. Or they could they could render an opinion, I suppose. Well, you know, but, but but I mean, it's got to be a farmer. This can't be my opinion, right? Right. Yeah. Um, right. But, but but still, that number is still going to be really really small, and the question of viability is really really important. And who gets to decide that? probably shouldn't be us. No. Unless we were three farmers, then we might be able to have a better, right. and more well-informed opinion. And we are not. But just yeah. thinking what's out there, you know, you got both sides of River Road, up and down all of River Road, it's farmland, you could say. So you got a good right. lot um, of acreage there. But a good lot isn't as specific as whatever the number is. I just think the number would be interesting, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Judy, you were gonna say? Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get here earlier. I, I kind of had a, this feeds into a procedural question I had. In the early days when I was on the planning board, the planning board and the CONCOM used to get each one of these 61A requests to review and opine on the, the mm -hmm. how, how important is this land to be preserved for the town. And that hasn't happened in a long time and I, I, I would say five, six years at least. And I don't know what other kinds of outreach you do. I would think in this case, the Ag Commission should certainly be involved. I think the Board of Assessors sends that out. Is that so the town, correct, Brian? What I know about is the town adopted um, the APR policy, which require, which asks the select board to notify the CONSCOM and the Ag Commission. Before, uh, before these, um, uh, before it takes action on these, the point board should have one. Uh, looks like Nexium provided to the select board, assessors, planning board, and CONSCOM. Okay. Uh, but it's probably probably still in the mailbox. Probably still in the mailbox. Um, okay, this <coughs> procedural. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. Does the housing? Would it be worth the housing now that we have a housing commission or committee commission, whatever it is? Because through the years, there's been decent land that you know we all complain, or we don't have to say that. Many people make complaints that there's not enough land available for elderly housing or, or affordable Below housing. Below and and cost when this piece pieces of property come out, why, why isn't that also put in front of the housing committee? they feel it should be purchased for that. Well, but then doesn't that get into the question of if somebody owns a piece of property, I know if I wanted to sell my land, I wouldn't want someone telling me what purpose I was going to. Well, that's, when you put it in 61. Oh, I get it. To. But you do, but you agree to keep it. You, you don't know, know it's, you know that's, that's the But then thing. it's not subject to, if I want to pull out a 61A, it's just a, a financial issue for me. It's not. No, if you want to pull it out, right. you have to realize that the town is very likely, if they want it, they're going to buy it. 
and, and oh, I see what you're saying. Not for yeah. purpose, but if the town wanted it, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's now there's CPA money. Yeah. Yeah. That's what part yeah, of that's what right. it in sixty one is all about, and that's one of the things that the housing committee could cer certainly be looking at these pieces of property and say this would be a great place to put up a. Because I know there's been discussion in the past of. Pieces of property that they've tried to buy, and by the time they can negotiate it, it's gone. Well, here's an opportunity system, yeah. where you've got a little bit more time to work it because you have the first right. Right. Mm -hmm. Of refusal. Fair point. Fair point. Okay. That's a good thing to think about. Yeah. Those, those are good procedural issues, but we should also find out the the, the, the numbers. But I but I think that, that making it open to making alerting all possible stakeholders. Yeah, is, we could amend it. Yeah. We could we could take a look at that APR policy that we adopted. That probably has to go to town meeting. You have a map there with the APR right. parcels on it. And and obviously Cynthia can come up with the sixty one A and B. Right. I, I was just saying before I think before you got your duty that the map wasn't doing the math for me. So the, right. the, and he, and he wasn't I asking how much. Table from yeah. Yeah. But 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 the, the question was not what's in Chapter 61 as opposed to not in Chapter 61. <laughs> how many acres of farmland have solar panels on it, and how many acres don't? So what fraction of our total farmable land is covered with solar panels? And the point was brought up that people are not putting prime farmland, you know, planting solar cells on it there is really marginal lands. So that was where the discussion was starting, that, that sometimes people lament putting solar panels up if they don't really understand that we're not putting them in, in you know, six inches of fertile land. You know, it's putting it into places where people have tried and failed to farm, basically. Planning Board has faced this a little, a few times. One problem is that almost all the land in Waitley is, is classified by geologists as private farmland. The stand that Fairview Farms is one of the exceptions, I suspect. But mm. a lot of it has to do with how well the drainage is, and, and no. it has to do with how well somebody's invested in it over time and what they could well, do in the future. So no one here is going to argue with you that there's a decision yeah, that somebody has to make an opinion it's on a, whether it's a, gray, it's a good gray area. You, exactly, exactly. So that, that's all we were talking about. Just the ratio, just the ratio. And and even if you counted everything as farmland. Uh, even if some, the, if the farmer who owns it can't get a crop out of it, and you still count it, that number is really small. Oh, it's very small. Right. It's very small. Right. But the number is important to have out there pu publicly so that, because the debate is out there. Yeah. And I think we, you know, Whitley's always very good at being ahead of the curve on these things. So, And since our um, appointment is now here. Early, five minutes early from when she said she'd be here. So. <laughs> let's, um, let's not waste Sue's time. Not that sitting in on this meeting isn't the best use of time for everybody, um, but let's uh, let's have Sue come on up and talk about that Mother's Day half marathon. Where do you want me to go? Right here. Well, close enough so we can hear you without straining. Um, yeah, I would like to have um, beer served at the finish line. So we'd have like a little uh, beer garden and Hitchcock has um, their sponsor of the race, so they would supply the beer and the safe serve and all the equipment, and they have their insurance to cover them. Um, and I spoke to Waitley PD and got, about making arrangements, um, so they're aware of it. We will have a couple officers there at the race anyway, so after the race, we're just gonna pull them in, um, thinking of how it should be all wrapped up by 1230 very short. Mm -hmm. so the beer garden will be wrapped up by 12.30 yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Because it's Mother's Day. Right. Everyone has somewhere to go. And what time's the race start? 8. 8 a.m. Okay. From that location or somewhere? It starts in the Yankee Candle driveway in the distribution facility there. I, I know I'm dating myself in terms of where Massachusetts Blue Laws are. But I, I know when I was in graduate school in the late 80s and bartending, liquor wasn't allowed to be served in a retail establishment before noon. So, 
can't buy it at River Valley Market before noon either. Still. Isn't that terrible? And I don't. I'm not against the idea. I just want us to be. Yeah. Oh, we can. We can no. make sure. It was 2018 when was the last time I tried. Yeah. <clears throat> That's about the difference. Things are already buying it too, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know whether it's just retail. You know, putting down four dollars for a pint or yeah. Or, or whether it's any good. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, um, Rich at Hitchcock didn't say anything, and I'm sure he's well aware, he but I will de definitely, you know, ask him. What Let's time would it start? What time would the beer? Yeah, the beer start. Probably like 10. Not like 8 15. No, no, no. No, at least till 10. We just have to wait till the runners finish. <laughs> at least till 10, yeah. <laughs> In yeah. England, it's because free. the runners, the runners who are of age, we're gonna. That's that's one of the perks to draw people. Is they get a free beer, mm. um, and then if they if they would like to buy another, they or if their spouse or whoever's with them would like to buy one, um, but it all has to be contained in that area. I am aware of that. Um, so would there be fencing? Would be fencing around beer garden areas? That what we're just thinking. Yeah. I, I, or something we haven't quite worked it out but yeah we'll have some snow fence or something or we're, we're trying to decide if we'll designate a, a tent um, yeah. from our sponsor if we can just get a tent some of those tents have sides you know we could have right. a something to keep the alcohol yeah yeah then you won't be able to leave the it's area fine. with the alcohol mm -hmm. so but we will you know i'm going to talk to him but we are going to have a like a last call probably at like 12 15. <laughs> um, Early because the race is always we're all, usually all picked up and on our way home by you know one o'clock at the very 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 latest. Mm -hmm. the, the agenda item says malt beverages, so I didn't know that you were also going to have like chocolate malts as well. <laughs> <coughs> so if you buy a permit for the hundred <laughs> like for the fifties, you know, you know, nineteen fifties. Um, I think it's a great idea personally, but I think we do need to check on. Yeah. Okay, I will. I will check, check with Don Allerise and. I will check with him, and he said he has his insurance. He does these events. Yeah. You know, they do these all the time. And he doesn't change your insurance. Yeah, and on my USATF insurance mm -hmm. that I get through um, USA Track and Field, I actually have to check off, you know, a certificate of insurance for him, and he has to supply his before they will sign off on. Okay. okay. So. Okay. And, and I just did that today because I would never done it before. But. And. and I guess since I've been here, we've, we've never issued a one-day liquor license, and I went back and looked at the forms, and our reforms really need to be updated, so. Okay. Um, mm. We'll have to and update I, the forms. I don't, I would assume Hitchcock would get that, or I, I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. It, it, it'll be, we could, we could double check. Um, I mean, typically it's the, yeah. at least as the regs are written right now, wait it would seem to be that it would be what's what's the event. is there a nonprofit that that yeah cancer that connection cancer can it may be cancer connection but I'm not positive okay when rich gets the, the it would be great if we had documentation on that on the law as opposed to just yeah we can look it up. someone saying yeah oh yeah it's fine yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's just, but I, I think it's great. So, so Sue's gonna have to come back here at some point. Well, somebody will have to come and apply for a one-day liquor license, and, and then the board will have to. But we have to prove it or deny it. And prove it or deny it. And meeting, which right. they may or may not, have, you know, to come to. Right. They could come or not to okay. sign it with or without. That yeah. Person. It would, I guess it would depend on if you're thinking about any sort of conditions that you want to put on the license. I know, you know, Jim. Jim suggested a couple things that it might be worth putting on. Put him on the, on the and, and and Jim's and I know it, it doesn't sound like he's adding staff that day. It's already there. Um, you guys cover that cost, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The race pays them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, is it okay to say what the, what uh, Jim's? I assume this is police chief Jim Savini's yeah. uh, suggestions for conditions and are they things that. That you can live with. Maybe you already know what the conditions are suggested are, but oh, I was just going by what, by what Sue had said. I don't, I don't know of anything else other than oh, okay. that. Oh, yeah. But you know, the idea of keeping alcohol uh, enclosed, enclosed. Uh, uh, the rules and regulations that 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 Whitley has currently are light. Um, they're on the they're on the second page of, mm -hmm. yeah. of that. Um, 
Okay, and some of these are a little bit outdated, like eight, number eight. Mm -hmm. Costco all alcohol for the event must be purchased with a distributor license. Well, that 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 law has changed, and now it includes farm breweries, farm wineries, and includes all mm. these other yeah, certain types of new breweries. Okay. So it, it would, I think, would be good to yeah. refresh How this. How do you think it bit. is to refresh this? I mean, should we try to get uh, an improved um, I think one day liquor license? thing to go around in the coming weeks? I think we could do it by the next meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That'd be great. Because I'd like to just put it in because it's going to be a huge announcement in my race world. Mm. <laughs> it's going to draw a lot of people. Right. Good. Because people come from all over. Yeah. Is that fair or no? Um, I've had people, I have had people from Washington State, believe it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And Florida. And it just depends who's in the area. They're mostly because um, a lot of the college graduations are that weekend, so people are in town. Oh, right. So. I didn't know they were starting to parallel like the Falmouth Road, Road Race. I, I hope so. Well, I, that would be cool, working. wouldn't it? <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. It is a big deal. So I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you know anything about the Blackbirds 10 miler? Do you know who's doing that? I do. Um, I believe 50-50 nutrition, 50-50 uh, fitness. Okay. Because I hear that's also going to go through weight. I just so found I, out about it. Yeah. What I hear, so I would be interested in them talking to some folks from the town to make sure. Isn't there a bicycle race that goes through town as well? Yep. They, they usually come and, well, they usually, we know about it because they asked to put the, the water stop and the porta potty out. Yeah. Out in the. Oh, for the bike race. The something for hunger. Oh yeah, food for hunger. Food. Yeah. Yeah. Bike for food. Bike for food. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Or are we good for now? No. So I mean, is is your sense that that we should keep moving forward with this? Oh, absolutely. So that, yeah. Yeah. So I think it, have I, to me, it right? seems. Yeah. I mean, you guys yeah, have been like me. so responsible and. Uh, we try really yeah, hard. You, you, you're, you're trying to make a nice, safe, fun event. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm happy to support this uh, because just because of all of your history. Great. Thank you. That's really. <laughs> I mean, that, to me, that's really important. You know, mm -hmm. I, I might not. Well, I think, try to, and yeah. I try to. You know, yeah. I, I run everything at least by through the police at first. Yeah. You know, and yeah. try to keep everybody up to date on stuff. How many people? There? Um, last year it was like 485. Trying How many? 485. Trying really hard to break 500. Although, then I'm going to run into an issue with parking. Yeah, yeah short in a race. So then, no, then I have to park <laughs> at the school and have shuttle buses, you know. So then we'll, I'll probably have to visit you guys. Again. And those people should just carpool. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I, I don't have an issue with it as long as we don't have <clears throat> conflict with the blue laws, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Somebody will. I, yeah, and I, will double, I will double check and get what information, but I don't think there is a problem, but I'll double check just from various other phrases I've done. Okay, good. Thank you guys very right. much. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry so, to drag you here for this small, short period of time. That's okay. I'd rather tell you, you know, because I've never done this part before either, so I just want to make sure I do it the right way. So, I'll come by here. Please do. I might have more people come watch the end of the race. They know I they can have a beer. And it, it's true. So, And runners, it's it's a big draw for runners to have beer. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Actually, It does not promote you know, right. physical fitness, beer. those yeah. calories. Actually, it's a people huge. Like beer. Runners love beer. You got to pay to run, though, right? Carbs and Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a fundraiser. Yeah. yeah. It's a fundraiser, yeah. So. Yeah. So. We'll have to get only a game here. Huh? You know that show on NPR? Only a game. Only a game. No. It's a radio show on. You date yourself again. Uh, uh, no, no, it's still on. It's still, no, it's still on. on. Bill Littlefield retired, Bill, but it's still on. Right, cool. right. And it's a woman who's taking yeah. over. Yeah. Who does the show? It's eight o'clock on Saturday morning. Seven. Seven. Um, seven. 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 Sorry, seven. seven. I guess I've been getting up earlier than I thought. Seven to eight. Really? On uh, um, the Northeast Public Radio. <laughs> And it does unique, unique things sports. about sport. Oh. So, you know, snow golf in Minnesota. <laughs> beer at the finish line of the Whaley. Yeah. Beer at, beer at any, that's why a lot of um, races are held at breweries. Right. 
and they sell out like that. They'll, they'll poke fun at it, at it, but it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks. All right. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in touch with you. What I need to do with that. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah. You couldn't awesome. Great. Thank okay. you guys. Thanks. All right. Um, complete streets. Ahead of you, Brian. You'll recall the town received a grant for $209,000 to reconstruct the sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road from the center school and the cemetery up to Town Hall and Hayneville Road. Um, so, the first step in the, the process here is uh, we really want to get a preliminary design um, so that we can have something for people to comment on. I think it's always better to have. Uh, something for people to comment on and um, sort of soliciting uh, blanket opinions on things. So, um, Keith was able to get a hold of Susan Campbell. She's an engineer who worked with the town of Sunderland. Mm -hmm. Sunderland did a uh, sidewalk reconstruction project. Is that the one on 116? 47. Uh, 47. Uh, and Keith and I met with her Tuesday. On Monday, Tuesday. Earlier this week, Keith and I met with this week. <laughs> met with Susan, um, and we talked about the project a little bit. And she's going to uh, submit us a proposal for the design work, so we can see, you know, what those costs would be. That's the one I gave you the contact for in Sunderland. What's that? Is that yeah. the one I gave you the contact for in Sunderland? That's who was on Sunderland. Sunderland was using. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't know if it was a different one than that's who they were. Okay. It's Sunderland's. It's not Sarah Campbell, it's Susan Campbell. Sarah. Oh, Sarah. sorry. I know Sarah Campbell. Yeah, it was Sarah. Yeah. Sarah Campbell. Campbell. Did she give you a price yet? We haven't gotten any. She just met. She took, oh, okay. took the... One of the other reasons why we need... To, you know, when you had talked about it in one of your previous meetings, you had talked about having a public hearing. Yeah. Right at the moment, to begin with, to get things going forward now, I don't feel that we need to do that because, at the moment, because we already have had multiple public hearings that put together the proposal that was done by Conway School. So I, I, can, I can't even remember now how many public hearings we had where the public came in and reviewed what was already been done. So she's taking what the concept that Conway School of Design has already done, and she's going to take it from there. So we want her to put together her pro up her, if we hire her, put together a proposal, and at that point in time, when we get it to um, on paper again, then we'll probably have one more public hearing to invite the public in and make changes at that point in time. But to start with, if you bring the public in first, they're going to want to see something. We don't have anything that they haven't already seen. So that's why we need to produce something for them to come in and look at. That and, and the coordination with the, the veterans, veterans even, even, that. even around the town hall parking lot. Everything yep. else, yeah. So all that will be taken into consideration, yes. Right. Okay. Yep. And I think one of the bigger nuts to crack will be um, how does how does the sidewalk maintaining its ADA compliance um, fit in with the Waitley Inn and the parking lot in front of the Waitley Inn, you know, so that people can get through there safely and across Haiti Road safely. Because right now, if if that sidewalk were to Continue, would continue straight through the middle of that parking lot, mm. which is not where we want to be yeah. letting off people. So it's got to be designed. Uh, so that's the sidewalk be. can't go through parking designed. lots. It has to be right. a sidewalk yeah. going so, straight no, no, through. No, no, I, I completely understand that. Yeah. And, uh, and the reality is there's, there's space constraints there. Um, and you can really push it one way or the other. Like it'll push it out towards the street or, or closer to the building. and. We have property boundaries and, and 
you know, street layout, so it's it's going to be. Um, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, okay. Focus. And again, maybe I'm dead wrong, but couldn't you just have a a a, a crossing area across the street where the sidewalk just continues across the street and then comes back, and and you paint your crossing walk so that it's clear that the pathway for pedestrian. Uh, traffic is once the, when the sidewalk ends, you cross, and the sidewalk continues. Then you cross. You can cross back when the sidewalk begins again on the other side of Haydenville Road. I, I'm just blue sky in this. You got to look at where it comes into the town hall parking lot. I guess it's, I, it's, I, I get that. I just yeah. yeah. So I, I just wonder whether we can do in something in like that because yeah. we don't want we don't want this to be a a, a problem for the way we end. Uh, it could be an opportunity for the way to so yeah. right uh, one of the things that has to needs to be addressed also is the fact of the issues we're having for the line of sight and the complaints that are out there right now and that is when you're at the intersection of Hayden Hill Road looking to the north you cannot during rush hour of the end you cannot see traffic coming north heading north because of all the parking and so that's one of the things that needs to be looked at too you mean heading north or coming if from the north? car if you are at the stop sign on the no road yeah. vehicles heading north on just I'm sorry. Sorry. coming from the north coming from the north right right okay. you because can not, you can't adequately see them and so people begin to pull out and half somebody's got to slam on their brakes are there any accidents? Because the, that line of sight is not is not in non-compliant. It, sh it should be a much bigger line of sight. Okay. So I'm have something that's going to be looked at, and if they if the sidewalks happen to be there, that would that was one of the des potential designs by Conway School of Design was to put the sidewalk closer to the road there, which would then alleviate that line of sight problem. The other issue that I thought about, and maybe I talked about it with you, or and we've never, I, to my knowledge, we've never paid attention to it, but am I correct in my understanding that the law states that sidewalks are supposed to be cleared by the property owner that is, has, they have no that is, responsibility. That is, the, that is up to the town of Wakely. Okay. That's it, okay. And at this point in time, there is nothing. There is nothing, okay. I just wanted to make sure, okay. And that is something that we need to address, though. That so. needs to be looked at. You could potentially, and we maybe have to talk to, to legal, you could potentially just leave it the way it is. Where in the wintertime, it's unmaintained. Oh, but then are we liable? I stuff? don't know. Yeah. That's why I said talk to legal about it. But presently, we have sidewalks now. We've had sidewalks since the 1970s when they were put in, and they've, well, they've mostly never been maintained. They got maintained by the town a few, quite a few years ago when the kids had to walk from the center school to the library, and the town hired a private contractor in Waitley to keep it maintained. And that's, you know, so there's options. The town can purchase equipment to maintain them themselves or we can say to the residents it's your 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 responsibility to maintain it like some cities and towns do i'm not making any recommendations on it at the moment i'm just saying those are options yeah i'm just worried about that is it maintained now from the library to the town hall no. not even that yeah. section so pe people can park either, no, either exactly. location. the library doesn't the library doesn't even shovel the sidewalk that comes out to from the sidewalk to the building is not maintained in the winter time hmm. that's that I didn't realize You're saying that. You to get to the front door of the library, they don't shovel that sidewalk? You can go up to the parking no. lot to get you in. You can only access it from the parking lot. Yeah. Perfectly clear. There's a nice concrete sidewalk that goes yeah. Yeah. from the sidewalk to the library. That's not maintained in the winter. 
That makes me nervous. Well, you'd have to look at, at what we agreed to for Billy Smith to do. I don't know if we're that specific as to what locations or just sidewalks at library, period. That was it. Because he's the one doing it, right? It, I uh, don't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to do with that. Yeah, at, the, at all our buildings, he's maintaining the sidewalk, snow removal for the sidewalks. There's another entrance to so, the building that you can get to that not besides the front door? Like, no. You know, that goes to the sure. front door. One, one of the sidewalks comes from the parking lot yeah. up to the front steps. And then there's another that goes from the main sidewalk straight out. So if you walked out of the library door and just headed west, uh -huh. you would walk down another uh -huh. concrete sidewalk to get to the old asphalt sidewalk. And that's not maintained. And that, that is not maintained. But you can get from your car to the front door. Yes. Yeah. OK, all right. But still. I'm sure I was not the only person confused about what you're talking about. But that's what he was saying. Understood. You're saying you're surprised that's not maintained. I, I am, because in the spirit of, of we do have people who enjoy walking. We have kids who walk from their homes to the library. Well, there again, yeah. uh, it's not maintained. The other sidewalk's not maintained. I know, I know, but the other sidewalk's not. How do I put this? Because the sidewalk is on our property, but both are on our property. There, it's it's a it's a sidewalk that's leaving a public building. It's a walkway that's not that's leaving a public building that's not being maintained by the town, and, and it's yeah, but it walks to nowhere. Yeah, you're encouraging people to walk. It walks to a sidewalk. To, it's not maintained. I know, maintained. I know, but so you're probably yeah. creating a bigger, bigger maybe. Place. Yeah, I, I just yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, something we have to. It's something it's going to have to be addressed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Veteran Memorial Project. So I, I thought uh, Jim Ross and Larry Ashman were going to be here. Um, so if we can hold can I put that off a little bit longer um, to see if they. I may have told them, but. I think I may have told them a little bit later because I thought we had Ms. Hamp and Sue and everybody, so they, they may be showing up. If not, I, I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay. Go back to just ask Keith on the complete streets. Have you thought of any schedule when you would be doing any work this year, next year? Oh, well, we'd have to go out to bed. Right. And whenever, all we know is that we have a deadline of June of 2020 without an extension, that's when it needs to be done. Okay. So that's yeah, why it, something else. it can't be put on the table too long. It's got to get, you got to get right on it. I, I noticed in, uh, <coughs> I guess most of the Hadley and even Amherst, they put sidewalks in along the street from the mall all the way to uh, that Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. along the edge of the street and and I'd say 90% of it is asphalt other than where you come to handicap entrances I think where they put the concrete in there so mm -hmm. I don't know what contractor was or not but another getting back to our situation another thing that's going to be really um, in some cases a challenge and add more expenses that we're going to have to have the sidewalk going across the driveways. And in many of, of the locations, people have gravel driveways. So that's what's there now. The, the asphalt terminates, and then there's gravel for their driveway, and then it picks back up. Well, you can't do that anymore. It's got to be straight through. So um, in those cases, in some instances, we may be having to decide whether we're going to pave from the road to the outsides of the sidewalk, so to speak. So that's another thing that's got to be looked at. Because if you just have an asphalt sidewalk and it's gravel on each side and they come through with their snowplow and they hook it and rip it out, and then so these are the things that are got to be looked at. Okay. You anticipated my question perfectly. Okay. Are you good? You guys good yeah. on this? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. All right. 
Veterans Memorial Project? No. Discuss and vote, uh, submit CPA applications? Just to say. Yeah. Do we want to? Which ones do you want to? Which ones do you want to be around for? I want to move them up. So. New business? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if we want to. Where are you? I, I I apologize. Where are you now? I don't think any of them very strictly yeah. pertain to Keith, but to the build maintenance. Just I think Keith, the center school might be something where Keith has a, yeah, something to say because he's very knowledgeable about some things. We like just that. move up A and B. Well, I can. I'll stay to discuss the center school. Well, we only got the CPA application. Nope. That yeah, let's do CPA applications. Okay. What's what is yeah. that? All right. Well, this is this is the question about the track again. I, the track and also the veterans more which we're going to talk about in a second but um, we never made a decision about um, what we were going to submit to the CPC in terms of the in terms of the track the, the, um, what's our share Judy happens to be here so that's good well, it, it <coughs> depends if you want the, the total share or the first year share well the, humor um, me first year wait a minute our our share of the whole capital improvement program is like twenty one thousand on here twenty one four fifty seven per year per first year for, for first year twenty six right. the second year okay, the, the track is going to be done in in the first year or maybe second year I mean carry over the cost of the other track is is six hundred thirty thousand uh, and if you if it's funded over ten years you'll see later on the total cost is seven oh nine the track over 10 years our share if you look at it, it's 11 well, 11.17 percent so let's say 12 percent of 700 is what 84,000 is our share yeah. of the track uh, but they're only asking us for 21 26 thousand a year so you know we, we, if we had 84 thousand there's no, no place to Put it other, keep it in our account and just pay pay it out over three or four years, and that's assuming, I guess, uh, CPC committee wants to allocate that much of our funds to Frontier Track. The, the well, other, the, yeah. So the question is, do you put in an application? Well, and yeah. The well, CPC the application is in, but they need to know how much we're asking for. It. Money. They're not. Well, I guess well, they can decide. They can tell us how much, but I, I think we need to we need to put a request in what we what we're looking for. Nine thousand a year for ten years. Right. If you want to do that, or or we can do the first year or two at the twenty one thousand. Well, I don't know. So, so and Judy, correct me if I'm wrong. CPA funds can only be spent on eligible on eligible items. So. The track is an eligible item. Correct. Um, so the track costs, their estimate is $600,000, of which Waitley would be responsible for about 12% of that. Um, so the Frontier is going to borrow for the track and for some other uh, major capital needs. Um, and the track would be about, about a third of the total borrowing. 600 it's about 1.8 million yeah um, okay so then Waitley has we'll we'll have it's its share of the debt service payments each year for that total amount so I think what what we're what we're discussing is can can CPA funds be used to pay the proportional share of that debt service in relation to the the cost of the track to the total cost of the borrowing. Sure. Could be. That's something. Well, I know you can't speak for the CPC, I can't speak but. Speak for the committee. I know it's eligible. Yes. Okay. Um, I also know it would have to be revoted every year, but that would be true of all of the debt service, I assume. Um, yes, but we can, yeah, we can certainly say this is what we would like to do for years to come, and you can't predict how much money you'll have in years to come, so you can't promise for years to come, but we can certainly uh, do it one year at a time and see what the CPC actually thinks. Do they really think, well, we'll do it this year, but not another year? We, I mean, you haven't had the conversation because they haven't, well, because we haven't had the conversation, right? 
Correct. Yeah. Or, or like or the other, the other Brian option. Brian and I talked about it briefly, conceptually. And I made the point that the CPC, the CPA is now funding debt service for town hall. If, if, if we were asked for a lump sum for the track this year, we would continue to pay debt service for town hall. If we were asked for debt service for the track, we might choose to pay down some of the town hall borrowing. So to me, it's kind of a, they're, they're not numerically a wash, but, but they're, they're an offset. So my understanding was it would be easier for Frontier to deal with the debt service rather than lump sum. I don't know if that's true. That's my, that's my impression too. That if Wakely yeah. said, hey, we want to pay ours as a lump sum and send doing his debt, they would just go, uh, yeah. and their heads would explode. And, yeah. and I don't think with interest rates the way they are now, that it's sitting in the CPA reserves would be earning less than the debt service, I'm sure. So, so that doesn't help anybody. Uh, personally, I'd prefer to just pay $9,000 a year out of CPC funds for our portion of the track. It's going to dramatically reduce yeah. the nut to the tax base of the town in terms of yeah. the, the debt exclusion. And mm -hmm. it's using CPC for a very appropriate purpose. But in my, again, my, yeah. just my opinion. But that $9,000 a year it includes debt service. Right. right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. I think that it, it makes complete sense to do to do it that way. But that would have and to be a, a proposed and, a, and approved every year, right? For, yeah. Yeah. For right. Isn't that true of all debt service? I, we have to appropriate the, the the money to pay the debt service. Yes. Okay. But it's not voted on every year as a CPA, is it? Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, it we authorize the borrow one time, right. but to borrow, make okay. the debt service payments, payment. we have okay. to. Okay. But it's a pretty okay. small number. I just, I, I just think that yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, and 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 I think it it'll make a difference to the people in the Roma town meeting that we look for every other source of money that we could to pay for these things rather than going straight to raising property taxes to raise that money. Right, and it doesn't exhaust that CPA pie piece of the pie for yeah. other things that we may want to ask for. Because if we if we ask CPA to do it all now, yeah. our hands are tied. Yeah. Okay. So I I does this need a motion, Brian? So um yeah I think it would I think the CPC would probably appreciate that. So we want to appropriate we want to ask for it, right? Yeah, we want to ask for it. We want to ask for it. We're not appropriating yet. Yeah. We want to ask for CPA funds to pay for the proportion of debt service that equals the proportion of the track to the total project. Cost. But it's not just debt service. It's it's oh, actual. The actual debt and debt. I mean, I think that's debt and debt service. Debt yeah. and debt service. Principal and debt service. Principal and debt service. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's in here on the table here on the track. We construction. Yeah. 63, and those will fluctuate first, a little bit. First year, 78. So you're looking at 12% yeah. of, of 63,000 the first year. So that's what, 7,000. Yeah. Why do you guys keep using 12% when I keep seeing 11.17? Well, 11.17. Because typically when you round, it's, you know, 11.5 yeah. and up. And that, well, gonna, that could change everything. I'm not an economist like Judy, yeah. but, I, you know. <laughs> because Fred's a pessimist, and it's going to round up because it's going to get bigger. No, that, and that fraction can change. Yeah, it will change. Yeah, our enrollment's yeah, going up. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's so probably going to go up. It's it probably going to go up. CPC would like the Recreation Committee to approve this as well before they decide or oh, before really? it goes to the Okay. 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 It's going to have to be a, rec a quote recreation project. Oh, I did right for that purpose. Yeah. Okay. And that's okay. before February. Or is that before the public hearing? Okay. Before that's the easy. public hearing in March. Yeah. What okay. date? Is, what date is that public hearing? Usually the second Wednesday, but I don't. Know. Mm. 
Okay. It'll probably be the second Wednesday in March, but I can't. Okay, in March. It'll March. be in March. Okay. Okay. Easy. Especially if somebody. Hey, especially if somebody. We meet on the second Wednesday, by the way. Just I'm sorry. We meet. On Selectman. That's Board true. Seven. That's true. Okay. Um, was that the only CPA application we had to discuss? In that, um, well, we can talk a little bit when we talk about the Veterans Project. A little right, bit but but season. is there? But before we go to Jim, is there another one not the memorial? No, okay. not, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. So then let's go to the memorial project and include Mr. Ross in our conversation. Hi. Can you come? I can't see through Keith. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You want me to put up the, the, I can put up the conceptual designs if you want. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. okay. So again, it'll, it'll get a little dark or GM? It'll get a little dark. Wow. We have, we're trying to get, bring ourselves up to the early 2000s okay. in technology. Okay. I'm going to pull my chair in and sit next yeah. to you then. I figured you guys might have to shuffle. But it keeps everybody awake. Yeah. yeah. What, what are we going to be looking at the whole presentation that you sent us, or I think what, what are we going to look at? Just the just the, I think well, it's up to Jim really, but I was I was thinking the three conceptual designs. Yeah. Well, let me fill let me just fill in the background a little bit. Um, so we have we have the ad, ad hoc committee that's working um, to um, design the. Um, Veterans Memorial, that's adjacent to Town Hall, and they had hired um, the Conway School of Design who had done the original work for the, the walkable weight lead, really master plan for the center of town. And uh, there's a graduate student by the name of Cameron, Cameron Cox, yes. um, worked with the committee, and she came up with um, three alternative design, or three, this is at the conceptual level. Three designs um, as to what the town might consider uh, for that space. Um, can you go back to one, Amy? Yeah. I don't know if do you want to. Do you want me to go all the way to the beginning? Yeah, that's the what do you want? Do you want to start it? You want to start here, Jim? <coughs> um, so this was the first design. Do you want to talk about it, Jim, or do you want me to talk about it a little bit? <coughs> Yeah, of the three alternatives, the committee felt that alternative one probably is the one that we would use. But this is not a firm drawing. It, you have to, it's going to have to get adjusted. Um, so we wanted to utilize the view to the east. And uh, at the same time, um, we wanted to protect the neighbors of adjacent property from people wandering onto her lawn, which really is not uh, something that all of us want. So as you look at this drawing, and let's start at the intersection of Haydenville Road and Chestnut Plain Road by the Wakeley Inn. On the pointer? No, because I can't okay. see. There's a, <laughs> it crosses over, and there's, there's a uh, fire hydrant nearby, but that would be a sidewalk uh, lean going into the center of this memorial area. It would connect with another sidewalk that would hook onto the existing sidewalk on the east side of the road, uh, just beyond the main sidewalk going into the judge's house. So it would, it would come down and connect with the one I just mentioned, and all of that would find its way back up to the original, to the sidewalk in front of the town hall. So there actually is there's three entrances to this memorial. On the left side uh, corner, <clears throat> um, this would be on the corner of the parking lot. That's where the memorial actually will be placed. Right, here, right? right in there, yes. That's where it will be placed. There will be a welcoming stone identifying Waitley Veterans Memorial Park or whatever. <clears throat> and then we would place the names on a granite slab in that corner. All of the, sh the, the vegetation is, uh, is low maintenance, it's low, um, it, it, it would not block the view from folks looking out to the east. Um, there's a couple of trees that have to come out of there. 
we <coughs> have not de decided on what kind of pavement is going to go in there. We would love to have a concrete walk. Um, um, on either side of the walk, we may go what they call a permeable concrete, which is uh, it absorbs the water. We're just not completely convinced that it's going to take the freezing and thawing. So that's something we have to look into. Um, <coughs> there is some place for a couple of parking spaces on Chestnut Plain Road. We know there's a telephone pole there, there's a fire plug, but we could accommodate a couple of cars parked right there. There on the south side of the parking lot, uh, we need to make sure there's enough room so they can push the snow up onto there. So we've, we've held that back. That actually is a berm in that area. Okay, it's a, it's a berm, maybe a two feet high, just to define the whole, the whole area. So, you know, we're, we're pretty excited about how this thing is going to come in, come through. We have samples of the vegetation from, um, she gave us several samples from the, the Sami farms. And we're, again, we're looking for low maintenance. We're looking for ADA compatible walkways. And, um, and of course, the Veterans Memorial, what this thing is all about. So is there going to be curved by the parking lot into the parking lot? No, there's no curb there, Fred. It's just going to be sloped so down there so that they can plow the snow into that area. Because there's no other place to put the snow in that parking lot. Where's the flagpole or area? The flagpole, we're, it may remain there. It may come down um, closer to the center of this um, with a dedicated light shining up. Um, that's, that's at least what we, we think. Jim, will the names be by conflict or war, or will they just be in aggregate? I'm sorry? The, name, the memorial names on the, on the wall. Yes. Will they be those who lost their lives in the Revolutionary yeah. War, those who lost their lives in World War I, or will it just be yeah. everyone? Well, we're going to reuse the existing bronze. Plan, you are, okay. Which is World War I, yeah. World War II, and Korea, and Vietnam. Okay, we don't go beyond 1975, but we're, we plan on doing that. We're going to add an additional one for uh, other campaigns like the Persian Gulf, uh, War on Terror, etc. Not that many names that right. are going on there. What about going back? That is a challenge that we've got. Um, going back before World War I, um, those names are very difficult to get, John. And Waitley was part of Hatfield, and Hatfield was part of Waitley, so. I just know the, the Sunderland one, the Sunderland one, it's very cool to see the Revolutionary War. It's uh, still it's war. It's really cool. It's really, it, 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 it's, it, it makes you stop. Yeah, no, yeah. Burnison is the same way. Yeah. And I, we, I wish we had that, but this, the, 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 we're still con you know, considering that and trying to find I think it. there's someone in the room from the Historical Commission, isn't there? Yeah, they there are lists in uh, Ina Kane's book, are they not? I'm sorry? The lists in Ina Kane's book and in the crafts history of the Revolutionary and okay. Civil War. Okay. I guess that's people who served, not people who died, maybe. Well, they don't need to have died, They're just who have served. The existing plaque we have are people who served. Okay. And there's a star next to it. For example, Mr. Alice was, was a Navy, he was killed in action and he's got a star next to his name so that, that you know who the KIAs are okay. well I can send you a couple of lists from the from various oh, that town would, histories that would be terrific that would be great I did speak to um, a gentleman from Hatfield who was involved in their project and we can get names from the State House through our state representative and that was a little known fact I didn't know that myself so I am plan on contacting Natalie Blaze and see if she can help us out. But again, there's not that many names. There really isn't, so, unfortunately. Right. Jim, there, there is a, a heavy metal, I'm thinking copper bronze plaque in the, in the hallway of the center school. Yeah. Does that have it's, it's veterans? What, what it is? It, all the names that are on that plaque are already on the... Oh, they're already on something yeah. else. Okay. That was World War I. That was actually the first war before they named it World War I. Oh, okay. That was before that. Yeah. Okay. 
The, the other thing you may want to consider for what to do in, in, the, in the walkway, uh, and I mentioned this, I guess, to the 250th committee, if you, in some other towns, I forget, Irving or wherever, had a uh, brick, selling a brick memorial, people would uh, uh, buy a brick for like $50 with, with your name on it or a deceased person, and you could put a brick walkway in there with your bricks. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you want it as, as a fundraising activity, uh, yeah. they had a whole deal on their website with the application and what you could put on there and the cost and all that. Yeah. In, in uh, Burnison, they actually used cobblestone and they engraved the names of those. Oh, they did? Okay. There's a there's a Catholic cemetery in, uh, in Northampton that you buy the bricks right. yeah. and, they, and they put the names on it. So all those things were considered, yeah. yes. But if you're looking for a place to do the brick, you know, maybe that's, that would be a uh, Good location. Yes, yeah. we just have to maintain whatever surface we use. It's got to be ADA compliant, and it's got to be easily maintained. It's something that's going to stand the test of time. Yeah, they sort of the brick walkways. My own experience with brick walkways is it's not really great for New England. Mm -hmm. That it's it gets uh, the you know the bricks get uneven very quickly, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to not be ADA compliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, really relatively quickly yeah. and I, I think I guess it, it maybe it's either very hard to do well or there's something about the New England change in temperature in the winter that really wreaks havoc yeah. on those yeah. uh, the Smith had put one put some in uh, outside the building I work in mm -hmm. and you know with, within uh, to, you know one season everything's cracked and then the next season everything's crumbled yeah, yeah. so uh, that's, I guess that's the trade-off well, yeah, between being able to. You can't do them all around. Uh, they they might be putting a ton of money into. Uh, I don't know, but in, in, into maintaining that. Yeah, that's yeah. one thing. So <clears throat> the cost of maintenance, um, I'm sure you're factoring that in. Is what I'm saying. So so I I, I completely get it if uh, if the fundraising can't raise enough to keep the maintenance going. Yeah. But as I said earlier, a couple of trees have to come out. There's one that's yeah. disease, and there's another one that her plant showed that would come out just that's, to open up that area. One is a pretty big maple tree there, right? Yeah, that's that's going to come down and storm, I'm afraid. That, that's going to be pretty sad. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, the, the three existing by the A prime arrow, they weren't on town property, or were they neighbors? Yeah. On the uh, right. east side of the sidewalk. You say existing trees, is that? The existing trees on the east side yeah, right of the sidewalk? Yeah. That's private property. Over they're there. all there right now. Like, yeah. So, so that sidewalk there. would actually be That's removed in front, of, uh, in, front of that? in front of the judge's um, area between the town hall and their house. And the sidewalk would end, so it would all be uh, ground cover. Mm -hmm. It would come Reminds down where the, the a, where the A is through the middle. Right. Essentially, your walkway is in the memorial would, would serve the purpose of the sidewalk. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. And it'd be kind of cool because people could walk in and they'd be directed into that area. Yeah. We're going to have some uh, granite benches so that people can sit. Um, we looked about shade, and uh, as you know, Memorial Day is pretty hot out there. Yeah. So. But well, no, yeah. If option. you're using two trees, are there some of these existing trees are going to stay though? Right? Oh, not, yes. not all of them. Oh, no, no, no. So the, the four things marked existing trees up there yeah. the honey locust, the honey locust. Yeah. Um, we're not going to take more trees. Right. Okay, no. So, but, but my question is those are the trees that will remain. The trees that would have to be taken out are not shown on the drawing. They're not shown on the drawing. That's okay. correct. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Have you thought of orientation of the monument in relation to the sun? Mm, you're going to no. be, because you're, you're facing west, so you're going to be in a shade. Well, you're, you're after day on, right? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you could be the other way, too. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm looking at this right, these things here, are these the granite benches that you're talking about, or is this the actual? That is a, that, that that darker area, Joyce, is our, is, is a berm. Oh no, I know. Uh, no, this structure right that's here. That's the monument itself. Yeah, that's, that's the monument, monument itself. Right there. Yes, correct. Okay, yep. and then over here. Yes. That's a plaque. It would be. If you look at a welcoming stone, that we okay. would we, we okay. walk in, identify what the area is, and I probably the flagpole would go right next to that. Okay, and then what's that? I don't know. 
I think that was yeah. part of that. I'm looking for the plan yeah. of some sort. Okay. I, I don't see any granite benches, I guess. I think there might be a, I think there, that might there, be a granite slab with a yeah. person sitting on it. No, she, did, she didn't really draw the granite benches. Oh, okay. There, so, uh, okay. It's all I, part of the conceptual idea. Just a matter of interest where that granite slab is, there are the foundation stones to the, what I think was the bandstand. Just a matter of interest. Just now, he's garage. If you go there, you can actually find the stones. Yeah. The, the plan is to take the, uh, the existing stone there and get rid of it. We're not going to use that stone anymore. We'll be using the granite plaque on top of that stone with the bronze names on it. And we felt that stone is not attractive at all. It's, okay. It, it, we don't need it. Okay. We can come up with something a lot, a lot better than that. There's also another stone there from, was it the Grange or somebody donated? Rotary. No, it's, Rotary. it's for Rotary. Howard Waite. Howard, is there yes. stay somewhere? Yes, and I've already talked to Judy, and we, we're going to relocate that somewhere. Okay. That's not going to go away. Jim, when are you planning on having this start and finish, ideally? When will this be finished? And start. Um, probably as we get closer to a little bit warmer weather, where we can actually start defining lines, okay? And um, um, yeah, find out what we're gonna use for surface for the walkways and the other areas. So we will be making some, some plans, you know, as soon as in the spring. I don't think the construction's gonna happen for a while, but because we're gonna have to review what we wanna do with everybody. But it'll be done by summer of 2020? I probably, uh, yeah. I hope so. I, I, I would recommend June 30th of 2020. This Friday celebration will be done. We won't be done for this Memorial Day, that's for sure. Right. Oh, yeah. No, no, because this is all, the complete streets work is all in the same yeah. place. And right. it seems very compatible, right? Because, it, it, not surprisingly, it was Conway School yeah. that did the other design as well. Um, but it seems to me that this should happen on the same time scale, and I think we have to spend our complete streets money by end of June 2020. So summer 2020 is actually a really good target for finishing up, Yeah. right? Um, it wouldn't have to be the exact same date. My desire would be to have the walkways I explained on a concrete, concrete sidewalk, mm -hmm. to match the rest of the sidewalks that you're gonna have. That would be my town. Granite is very nice. <laughs> He has a um, granite sidewalk. Um, Brian, yeah. while bringing, bringing it back to the agenda, while we're looking at this, yeah. let's have a conversation about what the CPA request is. Yeah. Well, the CPA request, and, and I don't know, Judy, you mentioned your email that you need firm cost estimates. Um, what does the CPC typically need in terms of firm cost estimates? We ballpark this project probably around 20,000. Okay, that's what we estimated right. it would be. Yep. So what, so, so Judy, what would we need to, what does the CPC typically like to, to see? Well, I should just, I should say that what the CPC is primarily interested in is knowing that the applicant has done yeah has done their homework and and there's a pretty good idea a, a good foundation for for where the numbers are coming from so some justification for the your ballpark and number. and then, and, then got that and then we could obviously only fund an, an outside limit it's not going to be an open-ended i mean the so i was wondering since i understand you haven't obviously had time to do share this with public hearings and, yeah. and coordinate with complete streets and anything yeah. I didn't know it's gonna be hard to come up with it well, uh, Larry told me the other day that uh, Conway School of Design has another service that they can they will actually uh, put a number on it we had asked people to have a number by February 1st yeah. <laughs> But it's, you know, it's a little premature for them to do that, but as we get into this planning process that I just talked about, they will, I think it was like for $150, they will actually cost this project out. I was, 
so. By Friday? No, no. <laughs> there, there's a fall cycle for CPA funding. Yeah. And it's normally only for things that are really urgent. I would think, and, and this is just my opinion, I can't speak for the whole committee, obviously. Yeah. Um, given that one, the project was submitted Two, that there's some desire to try and combine it with the complete streets. That would give the urgency. I was wondering if it might be possible to submit the final numbers for the for this fall cycle, which would be in, in submission in June for for review for a special town meeting in the fall. Mm -hmm. That way, you could start, you know, do any preliminary work over the winter and then do the planning and stuff in the spring. I, I didn't know if that would fly, but I think it it might be more viable than trying to come up with a with a number by Friday. By Friday. We'll certainly be closer to um, you know a better number yeah. in, in June than we okay. might be. Because I think I think that combining it with the complete streets gives the the urgency you would need yeah. for the off cycle. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, in terms of next steps here, this is a conceptual level design. So I think the next step is to, well, we'll eventually need to get to a design where, bid ready design, where we could hand to somebody and say, go build this. Mm -hmm. um, so we're at the conceptual level and we need to get bid ready. Bid ready. Um, so Our really the next step is to make that. So the town appropriated, well, we still have a little bit of money left from a, a state historical mm -hmm. SHARB grant. I can't remember what that is. It's a state historical record. It's access to yeah. um, We have some money left over from that. That was a $3,000 grant. And then the town appropriated another $7,500 uh, in town funds at a town meeting last last year or a year ago. So there is money to, to, to bring it from a conceptual level to a to have been ready. Uh, a very it seems like this is the time to do that. Yeah. That we should. Yeah. yeah. And there were two other. There were two other designs that that. Can you, can you just flip quickly to the second one? Yeah. There were two other designs that that Cameron had done as well. Um, one is. Yeah. Yeah. We might need to demo. Yeah. We'll just look at these. Thank you. Yeah. This was more of a, a pocket park. What she calls it. Here's a pocket park thing. Before we, before I leave that one. I think if this is going to be the preferred one, and I think I mentioned this before, you need, a, you need some coordination with complete streets as to where you're putting the parking, the mm -hmm. sidewalk by the way they end, because <coughs> if that doesn't happen there, then you're you're putting your crosswalk F there into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the other option, and, and I assume that's a heavy traffic movement from Haydenville Road going Chestnut Plain is to move it down further, move F down there, and then that may change the design of your of your memorial there, whether you want more sidewalk or, or parking or something there. Uh, I think yeah. there needs to be better uh, coordination and agreement with complete streets where you're putting that sidewalk by the way the end. Yep. I don't see why there is no reason why we can't incorporate the whoever ends up doing the design does the design for both. Yeah. The same person, same company, whatever, should be doing both designs so that they all work together and yeah. then it ultimately would be more beneficial to have them bid and constructed under the same, at the same time, the same contractor would be doing, you're gonna get a better price for both projects by having one contractor. Right, and it seems I agree with you. And has anybody shared any of this with the way they end people to know the impact in their parking? Which which part of the, the complete streets? Well, either one. Well, they were involved maybe in complete streets. Uh, I don't know if they uh, attended any of your public yes. meetings, but yes, they were. I mean, that's gonna be a major impact on your parking lot, either the way it is shown here or if you do something else. Uh, I guess I, I hate to see us go down the road and in a year from now they really objected and mm -hmm. and issue a cease and desist order because it's affecting their business their parking and, and whatever and they're going to have economic loss because of that uh, 
I think at some point we need to con contact them uh, to make sure they're they're in agreement with us on this today, not as not down the road. Yeah, yeah that's why I brought that up a little bit earlier. Was this that's that's one of the big issues we're going to have right. is, is how that how that would go, and it does seem like a crosswalk down here would be safer. Right. Because right. if you're Pulling out here and going left, you're, right. you're trying to watch two uh, two lanes of traffic and somebody crossing. If you're crosswalks yeah. here, you're turning. You're only watching one way one way traffic in pedestrians. So especially with the sight line. And you may have the other movement. Movement, I would say I would assume doing that. Yeah. So I know, Jim, did you look at another location for that sidewalk F there crossing? No, we no, okay. okay. would just be down. But that doesn't that doesn't seem like a major part of the no. conceptual design. Yeah. Well, you'd have to extend your, so, your yeah. memorial drive uh, sidewalks or whatever down. Yeah, but that's only that's only an eighteen foot extension. It's not a dramatic difference. Now well, you got twenty and thirty feet. You know, we did comment that in the in the good nicer weather, there's a lot of patrons from the inn walk across so, the street. Yeah, that's for the view and to look around and so we kept that in mind with, with that crosswalk in the entrance but i think his point is really good i, I the first when i saw this i was like oh are we going to do this the same time as complete there's a very first thing i thought because because it makes so much sense to do them together yeah and um and i don't know if that when we talked about sarah campbell she was going to start with the conway school stuff and was would she be doing what you would call design, Keith? Is that yeah? So sidewalk, side yeah. side, sidewalk design. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know if that's something that should be wrapped into that or not because there's plenty of sidewalk in there. One thing for. Oh, she's she's certainly got to be aware of this as she's trying to solve the problem of the sidewalk near the. Yep. Yeah. Well, the only difference, and I, and I think Keith, correct me, for complete streets, you need a what certified engineer to do the design, a registered engineer to do the design, or as whereas for your veterans memorial, you may not even get it. anybody to do the design. Probably correct in that saying there, but right. again, I think she is makes yeah. no to me. It makes the most sense to have the same designer design them both. Yeah. yeah. So your your sidewalks are all everything all works together. Right, you want to seamless, and we're not banging heads against one designer versus another. Yeah, we're, we're, the nice thing about this is our timing is on schedule for the both of them at the same time. And that's all the, everything's right. coming together for that. Yeah. And this was the third one that she came up with. Because our complete streets, I don't know, Jim, if you know this, the complete streets has to be completed by June of 2020. Okay. All the construction. That's unless we need it. We could potentially go and ask for an extension, but presently mm. we have to have it completed by 2020, in June. Jim, how did you decide on that you were leaning towards alternative one as opposed to two? It was just the way that the, the three sidewalks kind of converge in the, in the middle. Mm. Um, On what's that, as I look at this, the memorial on this picture, is that E? No, that's the stone B. B. Where's the? Well, no. That's B, where's B? I don't see B on this. Right the oh, there, I'm sorry. So oh, so that would be, so, yes, okay. Yep, and I, Jim, this is the one that's actually sunken. Is that the one that's actually lower into the ground? I think that was recessed, yes. Well, if you look at the picture yeah. in the down lower right hand corner. Oh, yeah. That gives you yeah. how much it drops. So that one down. actually slopes down we, into We were this. a little afraid of doing that just for drainage purposes. Because it's a nice flat spot now, it was pretty well drained. And I'm always, start to be, do a to lower it, I think you're looking for trouble. With this. It's actually a little higher than this, the street level, so it flows into the street grains down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Is it? Keep it. That's okay. right. Just, just don't do this. Just do this. Right. <laughs> yes. So one of the main themes out of all of these is that there's that there's flow through through the space from mm -hmm. the town hall over up to the side um, to the crosswalk, wherever that's going to be, and then it would continue on the sidewalk. We wanted to have some protection for the neighbors here because there's issues that we've heard about people um, walking into the yards and stuff. So it would actually be plants and stuff in the way where you'd, you'd have a pretty good idea that you shouldn't be trampling through these plants onto private property. But it would pull people away from that space into the memorial. Can I make one observation about, and I don't know what two and one look like, but looking at three, it reminded me of this. Easily the, the most populated event we have in this spot is the Memorial Day event. And as you recall, we, we really do have a lot of, because of space concerns, because it's a small area. We have a lot of people who watch the event as spectators by the way, your honor guard as part of that mm -hmm. from the street. Mm -hmm. With that hedge, I think you're gonna limit the visibility from the road of the okay. event itself. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's not gonna be very high, John, because we talked about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's it's probably maybe, maybe a couple of feet, maybe less than that. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have to come in from the parking lot side, town hall parking lot, probably. Excuse me? You'd have to come in your unit from the park town hall parking lot rather than yeah. Uh, Cape Hill Road. We'll probably put up, you know, the, the, the Grange probably would put up a small tent for that day. Yeah. You know, for people mm -hmm. just for some shade. Right. Yeah. This is, this space is great for the historical society too. They can they can have functions right in that area. Yeah. Well, now, are, the, are the limits, uh, Keith, the limits for the complete streets is Haydenville Road, the, the south of the limits? Yeah, it goes south direction. of the Haydenville Road intersection on Chestnut Plain, a short distance, so. But that's basically the end of where they uh, show. All, all of this area is incorporated in the complete streets. Right, but nothing beyond that, nothing south of it. Not a lot, yeah. Just a little to the south. Yeah. Okay. So, at the risk of making sure that we don't go around in circles and we bring it back to the meeting at some level. <coughs> Am I hearing that we should not pursue CPA and uh, CPA application for this current round and that we will pursue it for the special fall round? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And is it appropriate to give the CPA a heads up about that? You consider it done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we would have a much here. view of what's going on can we can we use CPA for design and have that now pay for some of the design and then later once you get a, a price for building it come in with a CPA application then well see we really have a design yeah of course it has. we have a design. Well, like a bid ready something that's bid ready yeah, do you have enough money to make a bid ready design because you, know, you, know, you sound like you had a few thousand dollars left from these other grants you know, I think we do. Oh, we have seventy-five hundred dollars, right? And, and that's the town funds. In that, yeah. those are three thousand. Plus, three thousand. So more like ten thousand. Then we got up out of that three thousand. Yes, I think there's enough money there. Oh, okay. 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 It's not a complicated site. It's flat. Right. There's no drainage issues. There's some tree removal that has right. to happen. And some concrete sidewalks. And yeah, you know, it's not a complicated yeah. site. Okay. It's just we just gotta make sure whatever the design is that it's compatible with the complete streets, but Keith oh, yeah. is on Keith yeah. is on. And and can I suggest that whatever final design you settle on, assuming you it's settled on by April, that you put this in the hallway of town meeting. Oh sure. Because I think people will love yeah. more than they'll love watching yeah. us. <laughs> There'll be uh, the next issue of the scoop deadline is the 21st or 22nd of February. I don't know if a little blurb in there. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how big these pictures would, would how much space it would take up and how much yeah. space. But yeah. if, if you wanted to uh, get a, li a little more of the news out yeah. about this, that might be a good. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're very conscious of talking to the neighbors. Donna was with us when actually this was presented at the Conway School. 
and I have spoken with the judge on a couple of occasions. And, uh, unfortunately, her mom passed away last week. We, we had a meeting here, mm -hmm. but that was unfortunate. But yes, we will keep the neighbors involved all the way. I promised her I would do that. So the picture may be, in black and white, the picture may get lost a little bit in translation, but for the school purposes, but it's a story. Well, yeah. One thing I, I just keep bringing up, and I don't know if we've decided yet or not, is to have an information meeting in early April to talk about these two projects, and we've got one or two other things that we could talk about. Add to town hall, uh, present mm -hmm. all this. Uh, and it, it's one way getting well getting people there because you've got several things to talk about, and it's appropriate before town meeting. Uh, yeah. One of these, some of these other ones may come up for town meeting vote on funding. So I don't know how that fits in with with Jim or, or Keith on your schedule for doing it, but <coughs> I, I guess I like to see it as you know, <coughs> one open meeting with several projects rather than every month to have some other meeting come up or, or meet here every month to talk about one of these when you get, as you can see, how many people here. Uh, yeah. I think you'd get better, better, more attraction, more people showing up to the town hall meeting for all of these. Okay. Right. I, I just don't want to lose the audience of the town meeting. Right. Well, I'll, I'll do it before town. Uh, uh, Early April, like a special uh, uh, information meeting, like we had before. The town meeting wouldn't be till the end of April. So. Right, but you got more people at town meeting. You right, but you won't have this much. You won't have this much time at town meeting to talk about all these and hear input from people that have something to say. Because whatever, 35 articles it goes. Through. Right. No, I'm just hard pressed so, to shoot this down. So I, you know. Yeah. That's okay, true. let's move on then. Okay. Unless you want to add anything. No, I think I'm good. Um, thank you. Yeah, we'll take it. Wonderful, Jim. Yeah. Looks, looks tremendous. Thanks for braving the blizzard. Sorry? Thanks for braving the blizzard. Yeah, is it still blizzarding it's out there? Yeah, it's almost a ghost. No, it passed a long time ago. Did it? Oh, it's it's not it's not it's yeah. I don't know. It was kind of blowing I don't know. I'm not worried about it. A bunch when I came in. Um, That's pretty cool. Uh, you really want to do center school for it? Okay. Discuss the future of the center school building. Don't need to make decisions tonight, but... I'm ready to make a decision tonight. <laughs> for the most part, um, that building is being not used by the town and not really used by the Whitley Historical Society, so... The building's like, like I mentioned before, the building's doing two things. It's slowly deteriorating and it's costing us money. Yeah. Um, so the question is, and I don't think it's true to start talking about it is, what do we want to do with that building? Um, I'll, yeah. I'll leave. I, I think that the building, I think we should make sure that it's preserved, that it's not a tear <coughs> down. Because it is a 1910 building, whatever, whatever the year is. So I think it should be preserved because shame on us if we tear down <coughs> stuff that's older than any of us. Um, but it's got to be sold, and we got to find someone who wants to use it for something. But it's got to be sold. Um, yeah, I, I I feel completely differently about the building than I do about the parcel that it's on. I really feel like that that is a really nice, centrally located parcel. That's where we, I mean, I don't think we can have the Fall Festival and the, the Memorial Day um, uh, celebration is not the right word, uh, the Memorial Day event without having that big yard in which to have, you know, tents for eating, um, you know, a room for the band, room for the cooking, room for the tag sales, room for the, that, I mean, that's, that's used, that it doesn't use necessarily 100% of the land because the buildings right there in the middle of it but you know they, having that that big space as a place uh, where you can go and listen to the band while your kids are playing on the hill you know it, 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 it the parcel to me is something that I, I feel completely differently about that and the building the building I understand you know it's a drain of money uh, it's not that energy efficient um, 
and it's as energy it's as energy efficient as a 1910 building can be from doing what we've done with it. But it's it's like you said, it's, it's taking it's draining money, and it's it's deteriorating. And it's not going to get that situation is not going to get better. So so the idea of selling the building seems to me to be that that I mean when I think about the building I think oh yeah that'd be really great. When I think about the losing that parcel of public land. I feel differently about that. I feel like that's something worth saving, and especially if we're talking about economic development in the town and making, you know, having it be a, a, a regional destination. Like, what what role could that centrally located nice parcel play? Maybe it should all just become housing. Maybe that'd be great. But I feel like it, I just feel differently about the land than I do about the building. You know? Well, let me just say, uh, yeah, I kind of agree with you that we should try to keep the, the land, but then you, you still got the decision what to do with the building, and mm -hmm. and even what are you going to use the land for? Because, well, you weren't here at the last uh, uh, fall festival. Was at mm -hmm. the at the and and our opening ceremony to town hall was at the town hall, and you know I guess it worked out fine they had a very good attendance more more than in the past mm -hmm. uh, the historic society is there now mm -hmm. I mean if you have the event at the center school I mean there's nothing no historic society artifacts or museum or anything there to look at so you got the mm -hmm. you got to go back and forth between the two uh, I, I don't think you're going to yeah. attract more people by doing yeah. that did that uh, spill over onto like the neighbor's property? No, like no, how did no, that? Not how was really. it contained? Because it's a really small. The exterior part. The, there's not a lot of land. Everything was in front. We used some of the, the parking lot, but it was around the flagpole and and, so uh, and the, the memorial. Oh, so, so into the memorial. Worked yeah, out pretty they, well. They, they, it worked out pretty well. Uh, we didn't do anything around the building or in the, the side parking lot. Nothing mm -hmm. was was really really there. Uh, and. Uh, to use the building, I, I guess the the way it is, it, it just it's like the blue school. It's just going to be cost prohibitive for anybody to do anything with it. Uh, you, you're you're yeah. not going to probably get much in, in offering price if anybody's interested in it because there's so much that needs to be done to comply with housing. I think housing looked at it at one point, but. Yeah. It, it just wasn't. Uh, wasn't yeah, I'm, I'm like, and like John, I'm uh, not necessarily averse to demolishing it. Yeah, yeah. And we, we could keep it that way. Make it, it when, whenever we decide to advertise it for sale, put the restrictions in. It has to be a historic building. Has to stay. Mm -hmm. The facade has to stay the way it is. Uh, and I guess see what we get. If, if nobody's interested in keeping it the way it is, then the other option is to make it available for any kind of use. Isn't it tough to sell if you're going to sell it and the new owner needs to like do septic work? How are you going to maintain, you say you want to maintain the property. The only way I see you maintaining the property is you have to become a landlord and you then potentially say we're going to rent it to whatever. Whatever. Yeah. And, so yeah, and, and and I really do believe that, and, and, and Joyce, I completely understand the sentiment around the land, mm -hmm. but the reality is it's used twice a year, two, two days out of 365 days. And I think that our memories are pretty powerful in terms of, yeah, but it, it's the way it's worked. And it prevents us from thinking about how it could work in the future. And, and the event, and especially if this, the memorial design was was tweaked in a way that would allow that space to be used while not impacting the importance of the memorial itself and 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 the purpose of the memorial itself but you could structure that whole area to make a really nice setting for those two events that that we all hold near and dear to our hearts for Waitley and then to Fred's point, you still have the, the 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 historical society and all their artifacts, et cetera. And, and it's uh, why yeah, that community. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not saying keep the parcel so we can have these two events there. That, that maybe I wasn't very clear about that. I think 
we should be thinking about what you can do with that parcel, regardless of whether the building is there. That the demolition should be on the table. Then we've got a large park size parcel in the middle of town. And we're talking about things where we want uh, Waitley to be a destination because we've got the Quam Quam Farms, because we've got the Waitley Inn, because we've got the, uh, the hiking trails, because we've got the bikes coming through, and we want this, maybe we'll have a coffee shop somewhere sometime. Um, but we, we want this to be sort of a regional destination. How could that parcel fit into that kind of a plan? And it may or may not involve the building still being there, because we know there's lots of problems with that building. It's going to be impossible to make it energy efficient, so it will always cost money. And maybe they built it in 1910, and that's old, and we should respect that. But we, it is, it is costing a lot. You know, maybe they thought it wasn't. You know, we made this a stone, and it's still standing. Yeah, but it's costing. I I couldn't agree more with all of that, Joyce. I just think that. The, the people who are in the best position to maximize that parcel of land, and admittedly the building from my perspective, is not a, a town, oh, it's sure. a private developer. And if Perhaps. we sold that building and land to a private developer who could put in a coffee shop for it, because you think about the amount of traffic that goes past that place, the bicyclists that go past that place, my guess is you could make a go of it in some way, shape, or form. I don't know, and we don't know the answer to right. that until we put it out and see if, you know, what fish nibble. Yeah. Right, we're, and, and yeah, we're not good at being landlords. No. It's not our job. Because we're a, a town. Um, no one's mentioned the milk bottle either. That's the, the, yeah. If uh, you're selling it, uh, you keep, that, you, keep that land. Uh, <laughs> corner. Another <laughs> thing I believe, I'm not positive, but I think it's already an unconforming lot. Oh, it's definitely not. Yeah. Lot. So, in many ways, there's, there's technically there's not, not enough. It doesn't have enough frontage. It's only two thirds of an acre. Mm -hmm. So, you have the steep frontage. You can't go around the corner. Can't go around the corner. It has to you be on one lead. street. Uh, I guess I, I've heard that there there is some interest in in townspeople and and use of the building buying and using it for several different uses. Mm. Uh, from a bed and breakfast to an office building to a uh, uh, museum and, and whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I think if we put it on the market, I think some of the people will speak up mm. and, show it, and show an interest. I, I'd rather see it go that way. Somebody in town that wants to do something with it rather than a business out of Springfield putting a well a Dollar General going there maybe right. yeah, something like that. Uh, but but to, but if you sell it, even yeah. to someone who in the short term is going to do something you like, doesn't mean they couldn't turn around and sell it to Dollar General. No, right? well, you, or or well, to, you can so put restrictions do, on yeah. the on it on the yeah, sale. The non-conforming lot, <laughs> notwithstanding, well, that 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 actually does put significant restrictions. What on point is, yeah, yeah. What point is the is the zoning going to be addressed? Is the zoning going to be addressed beforehand by the town to make it more marketable, or is it going to be put on the burden of the buyer? We didn't do it for the blue school. Well, you're in process. Of but, but, no, no, he, but he's yeah, he's done with that. Yeah. The process. Right. I, I think the town's vision is important. And Joyce, to your point about the economic development piece, if, if, if the town has a vision for what we want our town to look like from, from Quan Quan to the, to, to, to the town hall and then down to wherever, um, I, I think that looking at the zoning and seeing how it fits with our vision for the town going, going through the 21st century, is, is important we shouldn't leave it to the developer we should do it and then the developer knows our vision and and then we don't get the dollar general we get the the, the person who wants to create a a, a, a celtic pub there Muffin, second pub. <laughs> keep hoping <laughs> but i i think what reason we got this on here and, and i know if you read all the stuff that brian put out before the meeting uh, mm -hmm. the, the three of us here have been 
Oh uh, yes, I did. Doing read, stuff at the building I to did read keep it standing yes. this yeah. past week, and which, which is which is why it change it changes how I feel about the building. I, I did read all that. Yeah. Right, and and I guess we just bought another tank of of oil, so I guess we can keep it heated for another what two months, and so the decision is: do we do we put it on the market now? Do we wait two months? Three months when the oil is gone and we don't have to worry about heat, or do we wait till fall time before we buy more oil to heat it? Uh, I think we do it now. Uh, what were you going to say? Well, you're talking about zoning. I think it's important for relevant reasons. Uh, zoning is important. The planning board is working on a bylaw that we're calling a historic building reuse bylaw yeah. that would cover both the blue school and the center school and some other buildings conceptually in town. Um, planning board does not like to do spot zoning, you know, one thing. So we're trying to come up with something that would allow important <coughs> public building, public buildings, whether privately owned or publicly owned, to be adaptively reused for certain uses. And the thought process so far is that the historical commission would have to opine that this is a significantly important historic building, so not every old building in town qualifies. And that also it would have had to have been open to the public in one way or another for at least 50 years. So that would conceptually include the Waitley Inn, the church, the library, um, town hall, post office. We haven't come up with a definitive list of possible uses yet. Um, it would include multifamily housing, light office buildings, restaurants, small retail, antique shops, that kind of thing. Um, all of these buildings are on very small lots. Parking, most of them would not qualify under current zoning for any of those uses. And the limits are going to be parking and septic for all of them because they're very small lots. So, so to get a cafe or a pub and septic. Septic is huge there. It's right. going to be tough. How um, big is the septic on, the, on that? The, it's, uh, it's basically junk what's there now. Oh, it's real. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, my suggestion is that if you're going to sell it, you wait till after the zoning is finalized because nobody's going to exactly consider it. What, do you guys have a schedule for? We're trying to take it to that? town meeting. We're hoping to take it to town meeting. Oh, okay. Oh, then. So it would be till after town meeting. Uh, I guess I would. The building, I think we got it stabilized right now. It, it can survive without much further damage, hopefully. Keep uh, going through town meeting. Get and go to town meeting and yeah. see what comes up and then decide at that point. I'd also like to suggest that you think about requiring this addition of the sale that there be an easement that the health will stay where it is. Um, the analogy would be the stockade memorial. Um, it's, it's technically, I think, in the town right away anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. And yeah. it could be written, the Historical Society owns it. Um, they could continue to maintain it. I mean, it could be um, with, with access. But there's, there's really no place, no logical place to move that to. It took the Air Force to get it there <laughs> up for Route 5 and 10. So I think, what, the, was it the 95th Airborne or 90 it something? It was the National Guard. Yeah, National Guard. There's, there's lots around the library that could fit. Well, it cost a fortune. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. That's well, but seven feet it's, tall and concrete. It's, a, it's, it's, it's on a massive a, concrete base. And it's, it's an icon where it is, and everybody well, knows yeah. it. And, and, you know, depending upon what business was interested in purchasing that, that, that footprint, a lot of business would be like, yeah, I want to keep it. Thank you very much for maintaining it for me. But this is, this is how people are going to say where my business is. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. just thinking, and, and imagine people trying to give directions saying, right, go to the place where the milk bottle used to be and yeah. take a right. Right. <laughs> Nobody will ever get to where they're trying to go. So we can't move. No, so I agree with I agree with that, Judy, a lot. And so let's wait till after and crack the whip on the planning board. After town meeting. Well, the other thing you so might look at once they have their setup is like Keith was saying, to see if it's even feasible to put in a, a legitimate septic system. It may not, or either that or it's going to be this monster mound. I mean, you know, you can say all you want, but if you can't flush your toilet. Right. But yeah, I mean, the, so town, the town can certainly do a, a, a an updated perk test and a deep hole observation and quickly determine what type of septic system is going to look like to do anything there. Isn't that what you're sort of saying? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's... Yeah. That may not be a bad idea to do that. Just that get a bid on uh, tearing it down. I'm with Joyce. To at least know what the numbers are. Sure. I mean, I just. I think it's the best piece of land in town. We're going to sell it for a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we sell it for a thousand dollars. I see. I I, I, I differentiate between that lot and the blue school lot. Maybe it's because I find that building attractive and the blue school not attractive, and that may play. It won't take the same. It'd probably be three, four hundred grand to do anything with the building. But location, location, location. Someone. Well, I. It's it's worth. <laughs> but it's called vision. I mean, we gotta have a vision. Yeah. I we choose to go to the moon in this decade. The other thing you can do is right now, is when summer hits again, you're going to see a third of your parking at the town hall tied up with bikers, which I don't particularly have a problem with. But if you move them down to the new parking lot where the building used to be, make that the biking center, you know, now you have some parking again back at your front of your post office. Yeah. And then maybe you just need a port body. Put no the, septic system. Put the snowmobile. Yeah. Put the snowmobile parking lot there. <laughs> I think the bikers are a huge thing. Uh, they take up way till summer hits again. You'll see everybody be scrambling to try to get in the post office. You, but you don't want to turn that. If I'm understanding you correctly, you don't want to turn that what you just said was the best parcel of land in town into a parking lot. Just you've got a footprint there already where the building is, so it's not that much of a lot. You, it may be the small one. So. And then you've I'm got this. Pay the whole thing, yeah. but you can put 40 cars in there. And then you've got a little yeah. bit of playground already there, and then you can think about what to do on the rest of the. Well, that playground's old. It's look. It's a. Part they have to be maintained. And, and it needs okay. to be replaced. Fine. Then, but then, but then you've got a park. You know. Ah, okay. So I, I'm just. I'm yeah. Just saying. I mean, a lot of options. It's I not just, a big enough to yeah. replace the the soft, uh, the baseball field, but. You know, I think we we got to kind of think about this from you know kind of, kind of all different kind of ideas, and maybe people will watch this and they'll come up with other ideas. But um, that I think I think we shouldn't just say, well, you know, we shouldn't lock ourselves into one thing yet. Oh, I agree with that. No, yeah. we'll, we'll bring it, it'll be discussed several times. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, building maintenance and oversight responsibility. So we can talk about this more at another meeting if we want to, but it became clear to me when Fred and I yeah. and Keith and Wayne were yeah. racking up water. Yeah. Um, I sort of asked myself a question that I've seen this a little bit is, it's never been quite clear to me whose responsibility it is for building maintenance and oversight, facilities maintenance and oversight in the town of Whaley. Yeah. Um, and I'm still not sure that we have a single person responsible for that. Um, and it doesn't seem terribly efficient. Um, I mean, right now I think we're getting by because because Chief Savine does a lot of mm -hmm. you know the work in in his station, and he's laying down four tile one day, and I'm not sure that's what we want our police chief doing or or painting and Keith's, Keith's, you know, watching over the highway garage and doing that and I, I don't know what happens in the fire station. I don't know if it's John or the, the firefighters who watch that. Um, 
we have this building, um, you know, with the employees here, we, we try to keep an eye on everything, but, um, you know, we probably shouldn't be going up on ladders and replacing ceiling tiles and shampooing carpets and, um, mm -hmm. and then what happens after, after hours emergencies. Um, you know, what, yesterday I was, I walked around this building yesterday because I was worried that the cold was coming in and, you know, one of the, one of the heaters out in the garage wasn't on um, with the wet sprinkler system. So there, there's not really a, there's not really a, a, a single person who has that responsibility. Um, I just wonder whether, whether that's something that, that we should move towards. Um, so. I, I, I think, I think we, we should because, because right now it, it relies on Brian. Brian is doing it because I, I guess he feels that something needs to be done. He's the only one here maybe that that shows an interest in doing it. Uh, but we didn't hire Brian to do a facilities maintenance okay. engineer person or, or vacuum up f f uh, water off a floor. Nor does he have the skill set for a lot of it. Right. I, I can uh, vacuum. Can you can vacuum, but I, think that. I can wet vac with the best of them. Yeah. We'll tell your wife about that, though. So, uh, so I, I think we need to look at, at either a department we have now to take over that responsibility full time. I mean, make it a 24-7 on-call thing or hire somebody out to, to be on-call to do that or come every once a month or every week, whatever, to to inspect things like that and maybe uh, combine it with the janitorial service you know we haven't we haven't finalized that yet either okay. uh, front lines of building you, the you, yeah, custodian right put that as, as one position or you do it separately or or whatever because uh, you know we do not need Brian doing that no we don't need Chief Savini to be no, doing that, and, that. Uh, no it just mm -hmm. and and we do need the skill set. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at Brian, but you know, if something goes wrong, he doesn't necessarily know why it's going to go wrong, or or how it's going to go wrong, or how to fix it. It's we need. If you think and fix our the problem when it's small, what's that? When you fix the problem and it's small, it's right. going to save us money and time and grief. Right. Yeah. The elementary school hires someone to handle their facilities, and they have some a little bit of help from the high school, obviously, but. I, I, I would, you know, put it in in Keith's shop, but we would have to hire at least a part-time person for Keith. The to, thing that, yeah. to me, makes the most sense is that getting, and I realize that there's multiple buildings. Definitely, you know, when you incorporate the library, that they, they meaning the library trustees, govern that building. It's not the board of selectmen, so um, they already have a janitor there. So trying to to work with that, but ultimately, I think that it would be best to have one <clears throat> janitor, custodian type person that's that was be doing all the cleaning in the town buildings. I think having having it done by the, by the town has a lot more flexibility in the fact that you can juggle it, that schedule around to a certain extent. If you go to a contractual employee, they're gonna come on every, they're gonna be set just like your landscapers are. They come rain or shine, they're mowing your lawn whether it's pouring out or not because you're on a schedule. And it's the same thing with your, with your janitorial service, you know, your cleaning services. They'll be coming every Monday morning at 7 a.m. And if something happens, the day after there that's going to be that way until the following week whereas our own staff can be moved around a little bit especially things at the town hall when you when you go a meeting or you go two weeks for instance or three weeks where the upstairs didn't get used then you don't necessarily need to you don't need to be paying for them to clean it every single week if i would just add and i agree I, I would hire someone and I would literally, sorry to say I would put them in your department, but. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to, 
I'm but, adding more to my plate, I get it, but it makes the most sense. Right, it does, but I would add, it's not just a custodial service. It is someone who it's, really does know facility management. Right, and, it, and it's one of those things where through the, you know, just like this situation at the center school, I mean, I'm kicking myself too because I, we, were, we were doing that when, we, when it was still being used as the selectman's office. What happened was what we were doing on a regular basis. Right. We every time we that we went into that building, that water level was checked in that furnace and it was maintained. But it was one of those things where all of a sudden it was taken away, it was off our radar, we weren't doing it anymore, and I just right. yeah. didn't give it my thought to it. But I'm Yeah. But if it is part of the responsibility that then I have to do. Then yeah. Then I. Right. Then and it is going to be on my. It's a, you said the kind of the downside of contracting your the the custodial work, and I, I see it as more than custodial as well. But I even think it, it wouldn't necessarily have to be um, you know someone who's an expert in, in maintaining facilities because they'll often say, well, this needs to be done and won't do it, or they. But I think we might need the person who's willing to put down tile in the police station and take care of, um, you know, light to moderate repairs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, someone who's willing to get up on a ladder and, and do some things. And the, I, the I think nice thing about combined with someone who's willing in to do the some position of, like, with, with my department is that when the task that comes forward all of a sudden needs two people, mm -hmm. all right, it's a rainy day, let's go, yeah. and, and you do it on, and you, you, get, out and you get it done with more than that one person so uh, yeah and, and again it's custodial it's handyman i call it what yeah. you're describing handyman yeah but i i really do think that the facilities management the you know our 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 it doesn't our, have to be the same person as a custodian I would it, say. but it could be potentially if you found someone with that skill set but i guess my point is though that we have a capital planning committee who doesn't necessarily have a skill set to know what truly is needed for a capital improvement someone who who just lives this stuff on a daily basis is somebody we don't have mm -hmm. and we really otherwise you know does the roof need to be replaced well we bring people in who evaluate that and, and if we had someone with with the jack of all trades it would be a cost effective very busy job but they would also do the custodial stuff whether you could find that person who's willing to do all those things or not, I don't know, but that would be the idea. I, I, I think that's going to be costly to, to do that. I, I, I think the, the, say, the janitorial person do it, doing the regular cleaning, if he spots something, oh, there's water on the ceiling there, I think we need to contact a roofer to see what's going on. He at least would know that to tell somebody and maybe give him authority to contact a roofer to see what's going on. Uh, not him going up there and trying to fix it himself. No, or but, if there's uh, water. But, but yeah. understand the, I'm not there. saying he fixes it himself, but he understands the situation. Well, right, but if he doesn't, he would he would know who to call or have, have the authority to call somebody to come and look and fix, and, and fix it, or tell him what needs to be done to fix it. I don't see that one person fixing all these things that come up. No, but I think that. But you need to have the person that can identify. Identify right. that, right? Well, some things are, are obvious now. Maybe there replacing are. a roof, maybe not. I don't uh, think replacing the roof comes under light hand No, no, no. no uh, but, yeah, so uh, that, that that was really an important adjective there. You know, okay. light to moderate, putting tiles down, things that are not you, requiring a license from the state. Sometimes, though, like in cleaning services, I mean, if there's a puddle on the floor, they won't look to see where it comes from. Yeah. They're just going to clean it up and yeah. go on to their next thing. Well, so I don't think anyone's that. advocating for that. If, if we're going to expand the, the responsibilities beyond, I, I think having, in all these buildings, yeah. the buildings don't need to be cleaned continuously. That's not 40 hours a week. But all of the other stuff, the monitoring and the, you know, really understanding our buildings, being zen with our buildings is important. Well, we, we have uh, Neil kind of helping us some on the, on the town hall. I don't know, I don't remember all his uh, descriptions of what he's gonna do or 
he's not handyman. He's not going to identify and if something he sees is obvious, yeah. he's going to call he's somebody. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the. What yeah, there was a whole list of things. Himself, the town hall, the town hall steward. Town hall steward or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I, I don't know if he wants to do a, two or three other buildings, but. Yeah, but he's not going to clean the building. No, he's not going to. I have a feeling not. Right. I get the sense Well, we don't want to. He's not he's cleaning. He's a good neighbor. He's not he's cleaning the town hall. Yeah. Well, he's he is a good neighbor. Temporarily so until we hire a, a service to so, do it. But. So I'm going to, just so that we don't beat this to death, I'm going to suggest that perhaps Brian sniff around to what it would cost to have someone like this on our town payroll and then we need to bring that to the finance committee to include it in the budget discussions that we are undertaking. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Of course. Sure. So instead of looking out, why aren't we looking from within to see if anybody who is currently a town employee, like if Keith is willing to take on these responsibilities, why wouldn't we say, okay, Keith, well, maybe you should go to the personnel committee we can compile some information or maybe it's a salary increase or something along those lines to take on these additional responsibilities instead of hiring from someone. I don't think there's, between Keith and Wayne and some other t current town employees, they know our buildings like no other. My immediate response to that would be that everyone who's employed by the town of Whitley right now yep. already has a full-time job. And I don't think they have hours in their day or their week to do what we. I, I could be wrong because he knows the schedule of his guys better than I do. Right, but. right. Well, maybe he does, but Wayne, our water right. department doesn't. The thing about it, like even in my position, is that I would be somewhat relying on that that other employee that's, if, if it's, so to speak, the custodian that's, that's working uh, like under me to, to be feeding me that information so that when there is a puddle on the floor, then he calls, and then I, then I get brought in and we go and look to see what's causing the puddle. So, I, I mean, it, it certainly is a possibility that it could be expanded on under, under myself. Thank you. In terms of you have, including you, you have four full time equivalents right now. Myself and three full time. Three. Yes. Right. To those, it, 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 let's say that we have, let's say that this position, I'm ballparking this, yeah. is a 30 hour a week gig. Between the four of you, and actually the three, the three guys under you, are there 30 hours worth of excess capacity? That they could undertake this. Yeah. That's sort of my point. No, problem. not at the not at the present. Right. Correct. Right. Like That's right my now. Point. Right now, we're devoting about say four hours a week to doing like the the work here. Right. And you don't have the time to devote more. Four man hours, and and then we're doing a few other things on that time frame, like we're we are involved in dealing with totes at the school and things of that nature. So, um, right. So you don't have the, it's not your extra. No, what it would have to, to do it would be this, if you're looking at a jan hiring a janitor, that's where the hours are going to have to come from. Right. So to answer your question, maybe it's just not. Right. It's not. Yeah. 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 But I don't, I don't think looking outward is the only thing we do. We'd certainly have to look outward, outward to get uh, someone to take on those extra hours. But I don't know that we need to have the janitor be the same person as the one who checks out why there is a leak. Uh, and and that, could, that, that could be an internal person, a person who's already here, already familiar with the buildings and that sort of thing. And then, well, that's up to Keith about which is, assessing which his does it, yeah. With, but there, there, there are there are people that aren't full time. I mean, for one, our, our water superintendent is, is not full time. Amy is not full time. That's true. I mean, Amy, there's we, another one. You like time? Uh, you know. <laughs> maybe she wants cleaning <laughs> I was service. Say. I don't know. So, so I guess that's to me that's still a, an option. Well, that and uh, 
I don't know. Well, police is on call, I, I guess. There's police people that police now, officers now, temporarily. They have lots of time for laying down. Yeah. 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 Police, police department, he is, police he department. is pretty much, because of certainly confidential stuff and things of that nature, the police are usually pretty tight in who they want in their building, so they're not... I think they're at the moment satisfied with the way it is, but I understand you don't want to be paying or yeah. utilizing the police chief's time to be laying tile at the hourly rate that that's right. being paid for. But what about his part-time people? Maybe you know one is into cleaning service, <laughs> right? And that's why I think in a roundabout way that the cleaning service. Or contract, not a contractor, but a part-time employee that's going to come in and do the cleaning should be, you know, should be on the table. On the, oh, absolutely, like underneath the highway department, and, that, that, and because you're going to have to deal with occasionally, there's going to be scheduling issues where the person is right. sick or out, and if it's over, if it's an over 20-hour a week position, then you're going to be dealing with with benefits and. There's going to be weeks when that person's gone, where then you've got to make up, and, and that's yeah. uh, that's the one area where the highway department can juggle things around a little bit and say, all right, employee, okay. the other another employee is going to have to do the work while that guy's on vacation. So this needs to be budgeted now. Yeah. So uh, are you we'll put together some type of proposal? Do you I, have do you have time if, if we did hire this? janitor or handyman, handyman, whatever we call it, to work under you? Do you have time in your schedule to to supervise? I and, think and I'd like that? to, you know, it's worth definitely some more discussion. Um, I think it could be done. Again, it's, you're not, I'm not in the position where I'm having to go do the work of all that yeah, cleaning all services. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't have to, if, if we're having a, a cleaning person that's capable of stopping in and checking the, the water level in the furnace at the center school, it doesn't necessarily mean I have to do it, but someone is doing it underneath. I'm responsible to make sure it's happening. Right. Okay. All right, let's, let's move on. Yeah. Um, I would like to, because Judy may not want to stick around for this whole thing. Let's tackle um, the Judy Marklin New England Public Radio Arts and Humanities Award. I don't have much to add to the letter I sent you. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, well, I, I guess well, maybe I should be reading it closely enough, but you just want like a letter of support. They have a form online. Yeah, I'd just like somebody to go and fill it out. And then like on behalf of the Board of Selectmen? Yeah, uh, the point being, this, this would be to nominate Paul Newland for his work on Watermelon Wednesday. Yeah, it's it's out now well, I don't know that it was a secret, okay. but um, I have no idea what it takes to get this award, mm -hmm. but if I had to think about the one person I know who's most qualified, it would be Paul. And his work has brought a lot of joy to people in Waitley. It's helped put Waitley on the map. It's helped an awful lot of musicians. And I think that to have something that came from the town, as opposed to just from individuals in the town, would have meaning for them. So what, and we gotta assign somebody to to do that could be the chair. <laughs> it has to be done tonight. Sure. Unfortunately, it has to be done tonight. I've looked over the form. I could do it if the if the board wants to. Yeah, let's do that. If, if it doesn't take up too much time, it, it's, it's not, the form's pretty. Good. Okay. And Judy did a lot of the work already, so. Okay, okay. let's do it. Um. All right, that's done. Judy, do you have anything to add, or are you good? Okay. Um, Would you do the town hall field? Yeah, we're going to do that now. I'm probably going to keep it pretty brief. Um, 
so that that um, public hearing which was scheduled for tomorrow night mm -hmm. is going to be continued mm -hmm. likely until April 4th why so long um, I'm told the the meeting on January 29th uh, January 29th 31st mm -hmm. is taking the place of the zoning Board of Appeals February regular February meeting mm -hmm. um, I don't know why it's not happening in March but there's not a push from um, mm -hmm. really anyone to hear it quickly so that the okay. um, where does that leave the parties are, the parties are going to agree yeah. to have a decision before a day in April so that's a ZBA meeting and a ZBA meeting on April 4th Is that, that was the tentative date that I saw so on email okay. so my question is we have a we have a request for the use of the building yeah what's that date again uh, April 19th uh, April 19th okay the challenge that I have with this schedule is that to events are not snap of the finger things they can't and wait till the fourth. What's that? They can't wait till the fourth. To market and all that kind of stuff. And and so we're putting the applicant in the position of pulling the plug on a lot of work and expense. If and I don't know whether there would be an appeal or whether it were, you know, I, I don't know how that all works, but it it's a tough place to put the applicant in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I spoke with town council about about this issue, and I let them know that we had someone who wanted to use the building for you know, for those purposes. The next steps that, that are going to happen are he's going to issue an opinion as to what he believes are the mm -hmm. what constitutes the grandfathered uses or the or the allowable activities that are. And that's that are based on based on. Um, so the question is, so it's based on research as to what, or information as to what has historically happened there. Um, okay, and, and how do they, how would the attorney find that out? Um, Only things that are in the public record somehow, or? The, those are, so people have provided input as to what those are. Um, and, and Judy's been one of that, who's done a lot of research. Okay. Um, so he's going to issue an opinion, and at some point, the building inspector is going to need to issue a determination as to what he believes are mm -hmm. the level uses. You may agree or disagree with with town council. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but town council's advice thus far is we can use the building in accordance with his opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we don't know his opinion. We don't know his opinion yet. Um, he had told me he was thinking about seven to ten days. That was conversation was probably four or five days ago mm. so hopefully by maybe the end of next week um, we'll have a little bit clearer direction as to how we want to proceed and how, how we want to proceed with uh, the person who wants to use the town hall okay well you can say you've, 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 got, the answer, re you've got the request to use it in April from Paul. Yeah. So I guess well, we're not going to. Personalities don't matter. No. Or what? But uh, okay. The other thing is, is uh, our annual town meeting would be there. I, I'm advocating that's where we we have it rather than the school. Uh, and and also the the other thing I don't know if we reached closure yet. Uh, can I bring up the the early April pub, uh, information meeting on projects? I guess are, are we going? To, forward with that because we need to tell these people to be ready in early April to do that. So those are pretty clear historical those are, uses. Right. Okay. Yeah. Those are, okay, yeah. okay yeah. but so I, I guess, not in question. No, but I I'll, I'd like some closure on are we in agreement that we're going to do that public meeting in April. Public information meeting in April. Because we need to tell these people to be prepared for that. We can't wait till the week before. I, I didn't realize that that and maybe I've missed something, but I didn't realize that we were sold on town meeting and this public information thing 
at that location. I yeah. I well, didn't again, I didn't realize that. I, Did I, I miss something? I don't think this room He's is big enough. Uh, you can ask Dan, but I think the other times we've had the other two or three have been at the school, school, right? And we've had anywhere from seventy-five to a hundred or whatever people. Uh, so you either go to the school or you go to the town hall. Uh, but I, I guess that the, to me that the thing we were talking about this particular aspect, the town hall appeal. Right. Um, right. And I feel but like you're taking us off topic too. I am. I want to schedule these other meetings there. Right. While, but, we're, while we're talking about the town hall, but we're really talking about this the appeal. appeal. Right. But is it going to impact the meetings we want to schedule there? No. No. If, if okay. we choose to schedule them there, if we choose, well, it okay. would not impact it. Okay. No, it's, let's stick with the, the agenda. I mean, Joyce is absolutely right. So we will get an opinion from council, and we will let the applicant and obviously the, 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 the person who is taking issue with our usage and then what happens after council renders his or her opinion yeah i mean and, and I, to me specifically if if the, you know the decision on the fourth is say that the town council's opinion is that it is a grandfathered yeah. then we can say to the person who wants to use it we could say fine we'll book it but there's still this april 4th thing so if we were to make plans based on the council's opinion and then uh, you know the other people who, f who feed in uh, at later dates uh, were to disagree then where does that leave the applicant on april 5th yeah. not in a great spot not in a great spot so so council's opinion will only go so far um, and is it possible to actually whatever happens on april 4th to still hold the event under, you know, the given that at the time that you have to decide, yeah. we only have the uh, our, our council's advice. I, I don't, I mean, and I don't, I don't know. Maybe Judy's got her, her hand up here. But maybe there is, like, it goes into effect after some number of days to try to take care of something like that. I wanted to ask if the town could ask for a continuation. Well, there's a 20 day appeal, isn't there? A period after, after the CBA action. A continuation of? Of the April 4th meeting to May, to April 29th or something. Uh, I, I'd have to look, I'd have to look at it. But that would mean that that event would go on. Yeah. And I'm not sure that the person who's appealing our decision would be terribly thrilled with that. Well, it's at that, it's at that person's that, the that it was that's that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. But there's a twenty there's a twenty day appeal after. Is it twenty days or two weeks after ZBA makes a ruling before it's final, right? So so they can appeal the ZBA decision during that time if, if they make one. I mean, I think in, in terms, I don't know that we'll have the certainty that we would like yeah. to be able to. Unfortunately, it's a risk of the applicant at some level. But really, the, I mean, the next step is the town council needs to issue an opinion. And mm -hmm. we really need to move on from there. Let, let's, let's wait for town council to issue that opinion and then we can address right. this at our next meeting. Are, are we going to, how specific are we going to get, or is the town council going to get? Do we know? I mean, they're just going to say use to, use success is based on historic use in the past without, are we looking for identifying specific activities? Like specific. a concert was there, specific. a play was there, a Halloween party was there, a retirement party was there. Are they going to get that specific? Because if you don't, if you use in general, there's always going to be an appeal. Well. We don't think that's an allowable use. So, and it's going to come back the way that the use policy is to, to this board to decide in a meeting do we allow that use or not? I, I, I expect it to be specific. You do? Okay. If not, I will press him on specifics because generalities don't help us in yeah, this case. Yeah, right. Specific use and 
this revenue stream play a role? There is no revenue I'm stream. Not, I'm not following you. Well, no, no, because the artists get paid at these concerts. Oh. And, and, there's a, and, and there's the admission, admission being charged. Charged. almost goes entirely yeah. to no. the musicians. No. Um, there's you know, very, you know, the, the other costs are just kind of covered. There's not a lot of people in Waitley making a lot of money off of this. Some people think there might be, but that's not the case. No, but the, the point is it's admissions being charged. Yeah, admission is being charged, though. Okay. So. And I think we need clarity on that, though. That would mean that if you had <clears throat> one person who wants to charge admission, to bring in Ronnie Arbo doesn't get to use it, but the person who wants to do it as a freebie to the town does. Who's going to monitor the, the sound beyond, let's say this concert takes place uh, beyond the town borders? Probably. Who, who monitors that? Um, do you want to do it? I thought it was when there's a noise complaint, it's the Board of Health, I think, that takes care of actually making the, a sound measurement. Board of Health? Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay, but this would be an after the fact scenario. I mean, I doubt you're going to get Fran out right. at night on a Saturday. Right. We, I doubt he has a. a um, I think he would have access to a DV meter. Yeah, right. yeah they're not too expensive. But, that, but that's a challenge a, a lot of the time. I mean, I've. I've had a, a very bad generator being used in the Mill River, which used to go through my property, and it was loud. But right. at six o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, in the middle of the summer, no one's going out there to... No, but that's fine. I don't care, it's still loud. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> what other businesses in town, like the Whateley Inn or, or Quad Quad has, don't they have monitors at the perimeter or something? Physically. Physically, yeah, but this Whaley Inn probably doesn't That's have anything. Is. No, because there's, no, there's nothing, nothing there, there, yeah. No, I mean, it's a handheld. Yeah, it's a meter, just a okay. handheld DB meter. You hold it. The property line. It, but it's right in there, special permit. Yeah. What level we can reach. Right, yeah. right. Well, maybe that's a. Maybe, maybe we should purchase one of those. My understanding is that the, when they did the sound test for the new equipment at the auditorium, they had the milk bottle blend, band playing full tilt. And it was very difficult to hear outside. So, really? so I think the the double windows hopefully oh, are they do a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but there are so many things. I mean, can we? Would we be allowed to to host a presidential candidate in, on the second floor? Is that an allowable? I mean, there are so many allowed to sort of to French Point specifically. There are so many scenarios. I don't think we can write anything to cover all that. It's going to have to come to this board deciding do we allow it or not. I, I don't see any way around it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. all right. Well, let's get the town council opinion and see where we go from there. Yeah, yeah. Reimbursement right. mileage makes sense. So we usually yeah. set the rate to same as the IRS rate, which yep. is fifty-eight cents. What is it now? Fifty-eight cents. 58. 58 cents, even though even though gas prices are significantly lower than they were when they were at 51 cents. Uh, I move that we accept the uh, IRS standard uh, rate for 20 Rain me in, rain me in. You had your rant already. <laughs> well, I'm not. Where did I rant? All right. Second, done. Okay. Do we want to talk about the MVP grant right now, or when's it due? It's rolling admission, but it's the deadline. So let's paying. talk about it really fast because I don't see it as a big. I, I, I don't know why we wouldn't do it. Give us so. money? Yes. Yeah. I right. think we apply to have them give us money. And then we have to do the work after. And then, yeah. and, and, and then, and then Brian well, writes they it. They pay us to give to do the work. Right? You get money. They pay us to hire a consultant, <coughs> and then <coughs> oh, we have to rely on yeah. people for volunteer time. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's what Will is beautiful at. <coughs> volunteerism. Right. Everybody's lining up to volunteer, right? right? <laughs> um, but if we have the municipal peace vulnerability preparedness what the the, the, the product of you know, the work that we get done for this grant that makes us eligible for other things which is why i think at the end of the day we, we got should do similar complete streets we have to jump through yeah. tier one tier two yeah. and then here's some money at the end yeah. of the i have process. spoken with many people who mm -hmm. have received these grants yeah. and it's a no-brainer 
And by the way, climate is real. I'm sorry, yeah, I, I, I already made my motion. Second. Move it, Lee. In favor. We're all done. Fred? Aye. Okay. We're done. Performance evaluation of the town administrator. Do we want to put that off? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we have enough time to put it. Then, then my, my homework due date, Amy, is now <laughs> extended. <laughs> you were going to say something. Oh, my goodness. I, I sent up the email. And I want to do a performance evaluation of the <laughs> assistant to the town administrator. You were, I think. You were very responsive. It was great. You got right on it. And she then made you feel like I was the <laughs> delinquent person in the no, crowd. No, it was the same email. I'm <laughs> trying to think of the the, yeah. the, the, the the phrase about a web that uh, I done. No, no, no I, I just, I, on my way into a meeting at 4 that was going to take me all the way through 6, it's like, you need to get this done. I'm like, I can't get this done in the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Dan has no idea what we're talking about over here. <laughs> so no, I just came in before my meeting for the performance. You just came oh, first. No, no, no. no. I came in first. Oh, well, no, really? No. Okay. I have some input. I would say yeah. no. Oh, we like all good input, Dan. All good input. Dan's got nothing but good input all the time. Am I allowed to like say kind of like a general? You can say whatever you want. I. I think we would be foolish if we say, let's go look for a different town administrator. And I think we probably, I mean, my, my top conclusion without giving any uh, details, because I didn't fill out the details, is that we should be negotiating for a new contract with Brian. We shouldn't be saying, goodbye, Brian. Well, because our options are limited. Well, and then yeah. and, you know, if, those are, if those are two options, I, I say, let's go for another three year contract. I think the last three years have been. Uh, been really good without hit with the details in front of me. I, I, I certainly think that's the option, not uh, let them loose and let's find somebody else. I, I would, that, that, I so would I mean, agree with Those that. are kind of two extremes, right? But Regardless of the evaluation, assuming that it's not going to be junky. Yeah. And it's not. Um, oh, uh, my part isn't. And I've done my homework. Uh, I do mine. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, so. I, I, would, I would be very content and it's the way it happened before and, and and it just timing is i'm happy to to negotiate a new contract on behalf of yeah. the board as the as the chair of yeah. the board and i think that's been what's done in the past certainly right. when we hired new the chair did much right. of the negotiating right so. and and the the specifics can wait until the review is done and i think that's appropriate but i think mm -hmm. that i'm comfortable letting brian know that you really should not be Yes. And unless unless the, the 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 town of Concord is looking for a town of man, town manager and you get two hundred thousand dollars a year, I don't see any reason why you would leave. I'm not moving. Because you got because so. you got like a sweet select board, a finance committee that you know. So you would just doesn't quit. Top yeah. notch. You would negotiate the salary with Brian and then bring it to the board. That's for, correct. Yeah. For comment approval. Whatever. Salary and whatever else is part of the contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't have the authority to. It just it, it avoids it avoids having to post meetings and because I think that's a lousy way to negotiate a contract is to have it in open meeting with yeah. oh disaster. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think the only thing we did it in open meeting and again my experience is more with with hiring new than with um, with continuing uh, existing um, is that we we did talk about how how high could an offer go out to one of these candidates. And then the chair took it from there, right? And and uh, uh, that's probably not exactly the same thing that would happen in this case. But I think I'm comfortable with John. Uh, what you just said about you negotiate and bring it back, and then we all talk about an open meeting as we should. How, how about if we how, I add to that and say that as and Fred and I, if you guys agree, can can revisit our evaluation. In our evaluation, we can add a line about how we individually think, and tell me if I'm breaking up the meeting law by doing this, we are willing to go in terms of the negotiation. I don't know how that works because we don't want to give you the I don't so keys to the kingdom. And I, I don't know how to evaluate that. I'm not so, so number eight here is executive so session. Place. Yeah. That, that would allow you for me to leave and you guys to have a discussion. 
Um, huh? Whether that happens tonight specifically mm -hmm. or at the next meeting. I'd prefer not to happen tonight, but it can happen in the next meeting. Um, but, but if you need that to negotiate, I'm not, let, let's, next meeting, let's assume um, that we're not going to negotiate okay. in the, in the, before next the next meeting because Joyce hasn't done her homework. Yeah. And Amy That's needs to point. aggregate everything, and then I would take that information and use it as leverage. Okay. And she would share that with uh, us as well. Oh, yes. Okay. So go yes. back and write bad stuff so he has more leverage. Oh, okay. I'm going to okay. change my evaluation. <laughs> Does that make sense to you guys? Sure, okay. And I will not get my homework done. Next meeting, okay, we'll, uh, so we'll meet and we can talk about the evaluation as well. Yes, we exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll go to executive session and talk about right. it. Evaluations, so evaluations, so evaluations, so evaluations by law need to be discussed in open session. In the open part, right. But um, prepare for contract negotiations with non-union personnel can happen in the executive session. Okay. So the non-union personnel don't get the yeah. answers to the test. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Please tell me there are no time minutes for this. Um, I just wanted to quickly talk about this. These are the EV charging grants. Oh yeah. EV oh. charge station grants. Yeah. Um, so Volkswagen paid the penalty for um, falsifying their um, their fuel emissions. Fuel efficiency. Yeah. Fuel efficiency. Um, so there's a couple grants that are out right now. One of them is uh, one of them will pay for um, electrical view electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, they'll pay for 80% of it, and um, municipalities are a eligible entity. Mm -hmm. So, what dollar amount are we talking about here? What I've seen, 500,000 per entity on this. Yeah, but how much, is it, how much is one charging station? I don't see that. What I've seen on the state bid list is, and I don't know if this is right, if I saw the right stuff, and I'm sure they vary, but I saw somewhere around the ballpark of, of ten thousand dollars, eight to ten thousand dollars. No, no, that that actually so sounds reasonable for a real yeah, a nice heavy duty yeah um, no, sort of thing. The, they're yeah, not, the equipment itself is not that expensive. I don't know. Um, but you, mostly you've got to install it securely, and it's got to be like the good one. The, like the one that's installed in my garage is is not going to be high enough quality for uh, yeah. an outdoor facility, but. But ten thousand actually sounds like it's the right ballpark. Yeah. So, so is there private partnerships we could look to establish here? Waitley Diner. I thought I thought the Waitley, uh, the Waitley Park and Ride, uh, but then we need to get Mass DOT involved to kick in the extra. Yeah, no, no. Wait, wait, why is that? Because that's the perfect location for it. Yeah, well, Mass DOT. Mass DOT owns the park. They, and yeah, ride. they they return our calls like within like an hour. Yeah, but if we could get them to say thumbs up, wouldn't that be a good thing? Yeah, actually, how much would it take to get them to and to say thumbs up? I wonder if Furcock has any CMAC money, congestion mitigation, well, air quality money. For you mean for our match? Yeah, I, I don't know, but but my goodness, Toyota Greenfield is going to be thrilled to put in a charging station. I mean to to. And this could be the charging station brought to you by Toyota Greenfield. I mean, you can sell the naming rights for our match. Toyota doesn't sell electric cars. But they will. Some of the Prius are chargeable, but they're not all electric. They're not all electric. Yeah. But a lot of you get my do. point. Yeah. Volvo, I think, is going to. No. Naming rights. <laughs> so, Wayley Diner? Wayley Diner. Wayley Park and Ride. Um, Yankee Candle. Yankee Candle. Actually, the town of Deerfield should true. put one in the Yankee Candle Park. Yeah. I, um, I, I personally heard. would use it if it were right out there. I would. Yeah, I'm not sure the traffic is enough. Might not be. They might not think it's enough traffic, but. The di I mean, the diner is the perfect diner and the parking right. I mean, and I even a little bit with Joyce and, and with Nad, and uh, I think one of Nad's points was it, the fast ones take about a half hour. Yeah. Charge right, full charge. Yeah, or, and those will be the more maybe more than ten k for those. Um, yeah, so we want a, a place where somebody has a spot to go get something to eat or to get out of the car and do something. So yeah, and uh, for like the the park and ride, you, you can go with it either way. They they do it at the uh, um, like in, in framing the place you can park and go to the airport. They put in like the really low amperage ones, which are actually less expensive. But because if you're going to be parked there for a couple of days in the electric parking space, 
you don't need to be charged in half an hour. Right. And so you can go with something that's uh, what we often call trickle charger, but that's, um, that's another option if we're thinking of the park and ride area. Because if someone's really parking their car, getting on a bus and going somewhere, then they don't, you know, they don't need a half hour to right. uh, you charge. Know, you get, you they can call me crazy. Sure, I'll call you crazy whenever you want me to. I hear it all the time. Hurley, I would do it. What would you do? I don't know. Parents are parking there for an hour and a half to two hours to watch a game, and in the spring and fall, they're, they're there. And and player, I mean, the parking lot is over capacity weeks at a time. But are there? Will okay? Will electric cars go there? Or are, are like, there electric cars among those there? I don't know. Like, I mean, people who want electric cars can be can have children who play sports just as much as. Oh no, no, I, I I understand that. I'm just trying to like, do we see them there? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't but I I would assume so. It will be seasonal though. Winter, yeah. nobody. Winter, no one's going to go there. Yeah. But but there's more traffic yeah. there. There's there's most afternoons in the spring and fall. There's more traffic there than at the parking lot. You think uh, Jimmy Pachesnik uh, would let us put one up? No, I think the diner maybe. Well, I bet Jimmy Pachesnik, as a good businessman, might say, I'll do a uh, naming rights thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, you get more than one, Fred. I guess yeah. the, the diner is the, is the obvious one. But I still lobby for getting one right out here. And we, you know, we can be municipal leaders. Let's do three. On, uh, uh, they also sent center town, potentially, if they were using a town hall a lot. Um, uh, another place. The, there is one thing that kind of comes along with that, um, that as as an electric vehicle owner and driver, is the frustrating thing when you go someplace where parking is at a premium, which is sounds like it's the case in Hurley, less so at the diner probably. I don't see them being packed as much, um, at least not to where there's zero parking places. Is the SUV parked in the electric spot so that you can't get in there and park and Unless charge it's an electric your car. SUV. Uh, I've never seen an electric SUV. They make them. They're pricey. They're not plugged in. They're just parking there right. and, to block and the electric. enforcement is hard. So enforcement, we would need to make sure that if they're on our, certainly on our municipal property, um, and maybe even if they're just in the town boundaries, that someone is actually enforcing that it's EV only and yeah. telling people when they're not. Because uh, that, because that, that, that actually is the, the most frustrating thing. You know, you you really need to charge. You're there, and you can't do it. The other, the other side of that coin, Joyce, because you're you're absolutely right. But the PR from if you have a if you have a limited number of parking spaces and one of them is reserved for EV oh. and it's never being used, there's a downside to that. Oh no, I, I that's that's why I asked. Are they're going to be. It, because you wouldn't want to have like an empty spot that everybody's resentful of at right. Hurley if nobody who's going to Hurley is is using electric vehicles. And we don't know. I mean, there's no yeah, market research know. that's been done. We don't know about the true of the diner though either. So well, who who enforces the handicap at the say at the diner? Is anybody, or even Whaley Inn? Who enforces property that? Supposed to. Pardon? The property owners. Supposed the property owners are supposed to do that. Yeah. Right. And at Hurley, there's no property owner. I mean, you're not going to ask coaches. The coaches are not going to go tow some other pair. Yeah. Unless they're like from the other Losing team. Co the coaches don't even monitor whether the doors locked, whether the bathroom doors are locked at the end of the night. So, yeah. I, but I think we should apply. I think we should figure out where we're going to do it and, and find that. I don't think finding the match is going to be a big lift. And, and I can tell you from the map, there's there's nothing around here. you got to go to Northampton or Greenfield. Uh, to find an electric charger, unless you have access to my garage, and that's no. So now you know, right? right. Big Big uh, Y is probably the closest one in Northampton. Uh, yeah, Big Y is the closest one in Northampton. Uh, Big Y Greenfield's the closest one if you're at least on 91, and then there's ones downtown in Greenfield as well. But uh, when I originally saw this, I was thinking Ings at 24. Yeah, and all the traffic that comes from Connecticut and New York. And mm -hmm. You could even, I mean, I the Whitley, Whitley Diner from it. would probably match the, the one at the Whitley Diner, and they would advert, I would advertise that on 91. Hey, electric vehicle charging station, two miles ahead. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, and if you're but, and, but if it's for the highway crowd, probably not. The fast chargers are going to be important. Yeah, at the Wheelie Diner, you're going to want a fast charger. And uh, yeah, multiple, multiple fast chargers, trickle chargers over across the street there. The right, park and ride. Because you've got eight hours. Because you've got whatever number. Yeah, presumably some large number of hours. Okay. Do you have enough? For yeah, those? reach out to um, our contact at anything Yapco. We'll go from there and we'll try to reach out to somebody from MassDOT. Okay. okay. Just there. as long as we don't have to add it to the complete streets. Then we'll and if you need me to help with the OC, I'm happy to. I, I would, wouldn't call our district, I'd call Boston. Yeah. We'll, we'll get a quicker response in Boston than we will from our. Okay, um, uh, last on? minute. Oh. Just any last minute? That's a quick question. Our next meeting is the 13th. Uh, that's the same day that uh, CPC meets at, what, 5.30 that day. Do we need, or you need to be there to present our, our CPC proposals? If, if so, should we schedule this meeting till 6.30 or 7? Uh, oh, if it were up to me, just line your time. I would, I would, Are you, do you plan on going to that? I will probably go to the CPC meeting, but if it were up to me, I would lobby to do it a different night altogether. Oh. Or see that six. Well, I'm, I'm being selfish because I, I, I miss my kids, my, not my child, but my practice every other Wednesday night because of the meeting. And so we, if we're going to move the okay. meeting anyway, just move it to a different night for that one. But yeah, I am a coach. Unless you think you can do it at CPC first before our meeting. Yeah. Well, it can't be Tuesday because that's Fred's got assessors. And we have finance in. And finance, well, no, Tuesday, that's the every other. Possibly, yeah. Probably. I don't right. need to on the 6th. Right. So, what about the 12th? The, that's uh, a Tuesday, and that would be assessors. Well, what about the 14th? February 14th, nobody's got anything going cool that night. You should be busy that night. Are the, Aren't you and Katie going out? To, to justify yeah. Hallmark? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not available on the 14th. I mean, I'm just trying to be a good guy. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll do it at 7 o'clock. No, we'll do it at 6.30. Six thirty. Six thirty. You can zip into the CPC. That's fine. Six thirty. Okay. On the third, thirteenth. Okay. Oh, you'll change that on the schedule, so I don't have to change it here. Yeah. Okay. That works out pretty well. The schedule yeah. thing. Technology. It worked pretty well. It worked good. It yeah, worked. I can't. Well. I'm glad you thought of that. <laughs> I'm glad All right. It's there. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. A second. Good night and good luck. <laughs>